the heart of your teams, the heart of Michigan. Valley Sports Detroit, the heart of the fan. One season ago, after knocking on the door for so many years, West Bloomfield finally kicked it down, capturing the Division I state championship for the first time in school history. In 2021, the defending champion Lakers are still defending their crown, but the road back to Ford Field goes through a juggernaut in Rochester. One, two, three, Adams! As the Adams Highlanders look to keep their perfect season alive in front of their home fans tonight. We're live at Rochester Adams High for this Division I regional final edition of Football Fridays. Kickoff is just moments away on Valley Sports. This is the type of game that high school football fans in the state of Michigan live for. We got a rematch in the regional final. Adams against West Bloomfield. Glad you're with us on a night that screams football in the middle of November in Michigan. He's Rob Rubick. I'm Evan Stockton alongside the rest of our great Valley sports crew. We'll hear from Brooke Fletcher in just a second. Rob, we often don't get rematches in the state playoffs, but we get one tonight. Adams beat West Bloomfield in the first game of the year by nearly three touchdowns. Time to see how both these teams have improved. Well, the 21-point difference is even less than what the temperature change is from the first week of the season because it is cold. But you can throw that out the window because this is a very young West Bloomfield team, Evan. And they progress through the course of the year. They're starting five sophomores. So obviously the experience they've got. And you come out trying to defend a Veer team like Rochester Adams with experienced players in that offensive unit. It's a difficult task for any team, especially a young team like West Bloomfield. Now look, this West Bloomfield team has been getting better throughout the year. Rob alluded to all the young guys that they have on the team. They've been getting better every single week. And look, Rob, when you've got talented athletes like oh. Dylan Tatum and Michael Williams, you're going to win oh. darn near every single football game that you play. Well, we can, you can look at Dylan Tatum. We can look at all the highlights he has as a running back. But let's not forget, this young man's going to Michigan State to play in the secondary. He's the only two-way starter that we're going to see for West Bloomfield. But he has earned that right. He's an outstanding player. Played in the shadow of Donovan Edwards last year. Well, you know what? He casts a big shadow this year. He's done it on both sides of the football. And the Sparty, they're getting a good one in Dylan Tatum. They absolutely are. And the pass rusher for West Bloomfield, Michael Williams, is statistically, Rob, having one of the greatest footballs in high school football history in Michigan. Michael Williams is like Michigan winner. It's coming. And you're not going to stop it. And he is just relentless. He brings pressure off the edge. And I watched some film on him today, Evan. Not only is he a good speed rusher, he can bull rush. He uses his hands. He disengages extremely well. He's a wonderful player. A defensive end that's going to be a big impact player here tonight. Now we're about to do what Rob Rubick loves to do. We're going to talk about the trenches. We're going to talk about the big uglies. You want to beat West Bloomfield? You need some beef. You need that. <laughs> Alex DeGreek for Rochester. Oh. He can bring the beef, man. He's a wrecker. You look at this guy. If you try to run away from him, he will flatten out, chase it down from his defensive end position. If you try to come at him, he's going to hit you. He's going to bubble it. He's going to make a pile. Five sacks last week. He is an outstanding player heading to Harvard. Had a chance, Evan, you and I, yesterday to talk to the young man. Very entertaining. Look for big things from number 79 here today. It's been so much fun for us all fall long to see outstanding football players like Alex DeGreek and great teams like Adams and West Bloomfield. But it's so much fun to see the environments at every place we go. Brooke Fletcher has more on that. Yeah, Evan, we've seen a lot of great traditions on Football Fridays this season, but this one is probably the one of the most special ones we have seen. The Highlanders are led every single home game by a bagpiper down to the field. Yeah, you heard that right, a bagpiper. Now, this has been a tradition of theirs for over 20 years, and the guy who has led the way is Donald Ross, and he is about to lead the team down to the field, so let's have him take it away. We are waiting until um, just a few more minutes. But West Bloomfield, like I said, they have been waiting for this game for months here now. They have faced uh, Adams beginning of this season, and this has been marked on their calendar. Coach Grice is calling this game the big payback. 
So much that on Monday during film, he had James Brown, you guys know, the payback song playing while they were watching the film because he didn't want his team to forget what it felt like when they lost that first game. Now, his message to his team coming into this game is just to make sure that they're focused, they're staying fickle, physical, and that they are making sure they do their job. But I think Donald Ross is ready to play for the Highlanders. So let's now toss to him and see what he can do. up in the booth. Guys, take it away. Brooke, thank you very much. The bravest man in Michigan is the bagpiper. Don Ross, wearing a skirt, wearing a kilt on a night where it could snow. This is football weather. 39 degrees. we got a wind just over 10 miles per hour. I am curious, Rob, as we follow this game, how is that wind going to affect the passing game for both of these teams? Well, it's going to affect this man right here. We talk about uh, Therese Grace. He's got to be concerned because he throws it more. They're going to throw it, air it out a little bit more then you're going to see Rochester Adams. They're going to rely more on the running game. So uh, Coach Rice, is, you know, we talked to him yesterday. He says, you're going to play whatever the elements are. It doesn't matter. You still have to play. There's Coach Tony Petrito. To him, it's wind, rain, snow. It's probably all good when you're a ground-based attack.
One of the few that still wears a shirt and tie on the sidelines. You just saw the outstanding record that Tony Petrito has at Adams High. In his first year as the head coach, he set quite the standard. He won the Division II state championship. Trying to get back there, Rob Rubick, and this feels like one of the best teams that he has ever had here at Adams High School. Yeah, he compares it to his own three team that won the state championship. He has a lot of talent and a lot of positions. They're going to need it tonight because this West Bloomfield team, as you saw today, Evan, we both watch a lot of film. They even progressively improved tremendously through the course of the season. Those sophomores are no longer sophomores. They're juniors. West Bloomfield is always one of the more talented teams in the state of Michigan. Getting a chance to prove it on a big stage tonight. Demarcus Rouse back deep for Adams. The rematch in the regional final. Let's get going. It's a high spiraling kick. It's off of Rouse's hands at the 10. Has to pick it up, and this is a disaster. The West Bloomfield kick coverage unit swarms to the football, and Adams is backed up way deep. Parker Pico, their quarterback, has some early adversity. But look, Rob, this is a guy who can handle adversity. He's an outstanding baseball player. He's going south to Alabama to play baseball. He's had a heck of a year as a quarterback as well for these Highlanders. Yeah, and people underestimate his ability to throw the football. Now, the window affects him a little bit because he's kind of got like a baseball throw, a little sidearm. But he can throw it effectively. But his legs are very good. His vision's very good. You see him run that midline veer to, to a perfection here tonight. This is a very fun offense to watch for Adams. Backed up deep to start this game. They start with the run up the middle. Griffin Henke, their leading runner all year, gains a couple for Adams on first down. Here's the starting lineup for both of these squads. We begin with the hometown Adams Highlanders coming in at 11-0. Beef on that offensive line. We mentioned Alex DeGreek at the top of the broadcast. He is an outstanding defensive lineman. He is a sack artist, also very good on the right side of the line. He's going to go play college ball at Harvard. The offensive skill positions are a little deceiving, Rob, as we know, because of the offense they run. Wide receivers and slots are still kind of like running backs. They'll keep it again, plow ahead, and set up a third and manageable on the first drive of the ball game. Here's the D for West Bloomfield coming in at 10 and 1. The defending state champs in Division 1, always a talented bunch. Dylan Tatum, who's going to play college ball down the road for Mel Tucker in East Lansing, he goes two ways, and he is a load wherever he is on that football field. Adams on third down, keeps it on the ground, and West Bloomfield, what an impressive early sequence defensively. There's just no space for Adams. Oh, they're clogging up the inside. They're pinching everything, and they're going to take the inside midline away. So if that's the case, look for Adams maybe the next position to do some type of sprint option, getting outside, trying to stretch the, from east to west a little bit more than they did there. They tested the waters, put their toe in it, and then obviously pretty cold against that West Bloomfield defense who was stout. You're going to hear the last name Pico a lot tonight. There's Parker, the quarterback, and his twin brother Tate, who's the leading tackler on D. He's the punter. Very good punt considering the conditions and where he was backed up. But no matter that, West Bloomfield is starting in Adams' territory. The dropped kickoff on the first play of the game. It's been a big problem for Adams high early. This starting quarterback for West Bloomfield could be a problem tonight. Rakez Nance, they call him Rick, so that's what we'll call him throughout the night. They compare him, Rob, to Kyler Murray. Now, do the they compare kind of him, or does he compare himself to Kyler Murray? Now, I think that's more on Rick. Now, look, he's on television tonight. He's going to have a chance to prove <laughs> well, that yeah. he's like Kyler Murray, but that's, this guy really is a talented yeah, quarterback. Yeah, he can extend a play like you've never seen. They're going to run a lot with this guy, Dylan Tatum, and he's going nowhere. Hello, Tate Pico, flexing on the first play of the game defensively for Adams. Speak of the devil, Rob, here's our defensive impact players, DeGreek, Pico, Schomer. This is really a good defense for Adams. It is. You know, they're going to be tested now. They're, they're, we know the front seven's been solid all year. But that back four is going to get tested here because there's a lot of speed. West Bloomfield is going empty set right here. They're going to spread you out and try to get the ball in space to their athletes on the perimeter. They'll run it and gain nothing. Nance blown up. 
right in the middle. Rocco Arsini shooting the gap and making the tackle. It's third and long for a West Bloomfield offense that wasn't in situations like this a lot last week in their win against Detroit Catholic Central. Amir Herring, a monster on the left side of the offensive line. Michigan wants him. Michigan State wants him. A lot of people want him. He's a four-star recruit. And Rob just alluded to the skill players for the Lakers. Samaj Morgan, number one, the wide receiver, had seven catches last week against CC. And don't overlook number 10, DeAndre Hill. He's listed as a tight end, but they flex him constantly throughout the game. Ants has to throw on third down and forever. Down the middle, it's incomplete. They were looking for Hill. He wanted a flag, and it came a full five seconds after the play ended. I think, you know, Coach Grice was in the ear on the side. We're going to look here in the replay. The coverage is pretty good by Nick Patera. You know, I think Patera had his arm early. It could have been a whole defensive holding. They call him for interference, but that ball has got to be, be caught. That's right through the hands of DeAndre Hill. And a huge reason why, Rob, the flag was thrown and Patera had to provide that defense, it's a mismatch. Yeah, he's 6'2", 180, but Hill, as you said, 6'4", 210, that is a big man they can flex out. Lifeline for West Bloomfield. Tatum slips a couple of tackles and slips a couple of more. Dylan Tatum is a beast. You can draw up a defense as well as you can. You can have people in position to make plays. But sometimes great players make really good defenses look bad, and that's what Dylan Tatum does here. He's going to break tackle after tackle. You see penetration by Orsini, bounces off Orsini. Then Tate and Tate Pico misses him, and then he just makes a couple nice moves, then just pops back out this side. You know what? We got to look at Donovan Edwards last year. But what a start for this young man trying to prove that he can be the man that leads this team to a state championship. Justin Ward, the freshman on to tack on the PAT. Dylan Tatum last week against Catholic Central was awesome. Rolled for nearly 200 running yards and three touchdowns. And this run he just had looked exactly like what he was doing against the Shamrocks last weekend. Bouncing off bodies all over the place. Somewhere Mel Tucker is watching and somewhere Mel Tucker is smiling. The future Spartan to the house and West Bloomfield strikes first. Tyrese Grice is happy with this start. We're not even four minutes in, and West Bloomfield on the back of Dylan Tatum leads 7-0. Time for everybody's favorite segment, the Rubik's Cube. Okay. Rob, what about for West Bloomfield? What's their keys tonight? Well, I think first of all, it's got to be Ghostbusters. And I say that, that means you can't follow ghosts. When you're playing against a beer team, you have to stick with your keys. Don't be fooled by in the window dressing that you see, any type of motions and stuff. Read your keys. Be uh, technique sound. And the other thing is go big or go home. They have to have chunk plays. West Bloomfield relies on those plays. And we just saw one right there. It's starting out by, you know, Dylan Tatum with a nice run, breaking some tackles. So, so far, West Bloomfield sticking to the script of what they need to do to get the win. Yeah, everything you just said has literally already happened for West <laughs> Bloomfield. An absolute dream start. Ryan Krauthammer, the kicker, sends it away on a windy night. It goes out of bounds. And this is quite the contrast for Adams High. They started their last drive on the five. Now they're going to start in slightly better field position. 30-yard yeah, gain there. Th three first downs in the 35-yard line. Not bad. Tony Petrito is uh, happy about that. How about for Adams? What are their keys tonight? Well, I think first off, ball hogging. What you got to do is you got to possess it. You got to pack man it down the field, have long drives, 12, 14 play drives, keep that West Bloomfield offense on the sideline, and finish it with points. And then the last one is we, if they had done this in the first series, they'd be all right. They have to bring a lot of bodies to the ball. Dylan Tatum can make one or two guys miss. So you need three, four, a lot of gang tackling. You know, really meet at the ball and, and help each other out and not allow him to get you know, break those tackles as he did in that first drive. Parker Pico keeps, and he's met by that man, Michael Williams, one of the best sack artists in the history of the state of Michigan, sets the edge there, and Adams once again can get that ground game going. 
Yeah, we talked about Michael Williams. He doesn't buy into the ball fake, and he comes underneath the motion and is able to get Parker Pico before he gets going. See, if he gets sucked in by that motion, that fake to the jet, he might widen a little bit and open up that crease. Well, very disciplined Michael Williams does a nice job of closing it. Mentioned it at the top of the broadcast. You can see it on the screen. He's having one of the best seasons in the history of high school football in terms of sacks. Griffin Henke on the run, found a little sliver. Henke on the carry. But still, Rob, this is the situation that Adams does not want to be in. This is not an offense that is designed to convert third and long. Absolutely. They're a team, if you watch any of the military academies play at the FBS level, they want three yards, four yards, third down and three type of deal. They're not really wired in the passing game, but we talked about Parker Pico is still efficient, and they have some receivers. Look at Precorn. You know, he's already been offered by Central Michigan as a sophomore, so he's a big target. And Cyborg is a good receiver as well. Now Parker Pico has thrown for four touchdowns this season. And Brady Prescorn, 22, near side of your screen is the big target. They'll keep it on the ground. On third down, great decision. Parker Pico first down, and Adams converts and keeps the drive alive. Well, they got to the edge, not much not much room inside, but they're going to option the end. Watch the defensive end is going to come down here. I think it's Joseph Clark, number 15. He gets sealed inside. Mike Williams tries to run it down for the backside, but not able to, and a good job of just kind of reaching and sealing Clark and opening up the edge outside. And that's what you'd like to see from Rocco Orsini and Alex DeGreek. Right at midfield for Adams on their second drive of the game. Eco kind of bobbled the snap, did find it, and created a pretty good play. Across the 45, he goes. And that, Rob, is what Adams wants. They want four or five-yard chunks on every single play. Yeah, and that's a nice little play. They're getting to the edge because they do a full block with the guard tackle on the right side. Alex DeGree kind of blocks down. They pull Orsini. He comes over the edge. He seals it, and then Tate, Pico, gets outside, number 30. We've seen him coming off. Gets a pancake block. Just mattresses the defender. You've probably noticed by now that we are saying a lot of the same names for Adams. They have double-digit number of guys who go both ways. This is a very talented Adams team. Off play action. Pico throwing. Hit as he throws. It's incomplete. Great pressure coming from the Lakers. K.J. Johnson brought the heat that time. And this is one thing I noticed today watching film on them is they really come. They come all the way across. It's not like one guy. They don't create lanes. They come all four. You, you're going to see Joseph Clark comes, and they're going to bring a dog. That's Kyle Johnson, KJ, heading to Grand Valley. And he comes off unblocked and really delivers a blow to Pico, setting up a third down and three. Might be four down territory. I think if they get two here, look for him to go for it on fourth down. They run it and do gain a couple. It'll be fourth and short after just a monster hit. These West Bloomfield Lakers on a chilly November night are flying all over the place. Shout out to Rob Harris on that play. Yeah, they did a good job filling. They read it properly. They filled on the backside right where the little counter action was coming. And there was nothing there. Now, is this, is this going to be the hard counter or the pooch punt? The pooch punt. Let's see if it checks up for Pico. Oh, yeah, it does. Let's look at one of your golf shots, Rob. Checking inside the 10, oh. right near the 5. Pretty good one. Yeah, I thought we haven't golfed together before. I'm my, just assuming My golf shot would have been like that kickoff. They went out of bounds somewhere to the side. All right, you're going to see my golf game someday. I'm a lefty. Cut. Big old slice. Not ideal. Uh, what West Bloomfield has done so far tonight is ideal. A 7-0 lead. Huge reason why they're up, Rob. Dylan Tatum already has one touchdown run tonight, and last week against Detroit Catholic Central, man possessed, yeah, scored against, three times. He's just an explosive yeah, runner. Against Oak Park, they had enough of him. Everyone who's seen him is more than happy to see him leave. You see him breaking tackles against CC, as we saw him do in the opening drive for West Bloomfield. Raquez Nance back in the field. Running up the middle with a lot of room on first down. Shimmying, shaking, escorted out of bounds with a very good gain on first down. The Lakers come on an empty set, five receivers, and they just snap it half a second. Pre-planned quarterback draw. Let your uh, shaky little quarterback find the seam and picks up positive yards. Dylan Tatum said about his sophomore quarterback, Rick Nance, this is a direct quote. 
He's impeccable. It's about the nicest thing you can say about somebody. Nance gives. Kenneth Jones runs. Didn't need much. Didn't gain much, but it's a first down, and West Bloomfield moves the sticks. Kenneth Jones is the second back in this two-headed monster attack for West Bloomfield. Dylan Tatum now has 22 touchdowns on the season. Kenneth Jones, the third, the junior, comes in with four on the season. Hey, Coach, Coach Grace really believes in two platooning. So since Dylan Tatum is the one that's going both ways, they will give him some breathers on the offensive side of the ball. That shows you how valuable he is defensively. Ants up the middle again, and this time Adams sniffs it out pretty well. Guy we're going to hear a lot. We've already heard him a lot. Tate Pico makes the tackle, and it's second down for West Bloomfield. Rob, I know one thing. The city of Novi is sick of the West Bloomfield Lakers. <laughs> the Lakers in the first two rounds of the playoffs have uh, beaten Novi, and they've beaten Detroit Catholic Central, which is in Novi. Tyrese Grice has a very confident team coming into Rochester tonight. Lance gives, and another powerful one for West Bloomfield. Man, it is just hard to bring their backs down. Dylan Tatum requires at least three guys to bring him down. Yeah, and they're just running inside zone. They're nothing fancy. There's no trapping. There's no pulling. All the offensive linemen are just reaching, stepping play side, blocking their area, and then just trying to drive. When you got a big offensive line like they have, I mean, Nelson's 230, King 300, Henry 325, Rose 300. You've got some big men. Now watch him. you got to be careful. He can bounce this. If he hits it up inside, he decides to bounce to the edge. Tatum off the direct snap. Has got the edge. Dylan Tatum hitting the turbo button. Tackled inside the 30. There is a flag back behind the play. And I think that run for Dylan's getting wiped off the board. Well, you know, going into that play, when you have a back like Dylan Tatum, when it's third and short, you're thinking he's going to bury it. Holding. Repeat the down. You think he's going to bury it inside, but down. you have his type of speed. And that's why I was 11, kind of speculating 11. that he might bounce it, because that's where the space is. Everyone's gathering inside. Right there, DeGreek. Yo, oh, DeGreek was getting pulled down from behind. And that's what he will do when you, you play against a great player. I don't know if that was Blake Nelson. Someone's trying to had his jersey and trying to pull him down from inside, because he will chase stuff down from behind. He's that good. But that's a huge penalty. We saw a huge penalty early in the game on Adams on the interference call, which led to the touchdown. And again, Rob, this is like Adams' offense. West Bloomfield doesn't want to be in spots like this, third and long. Nance empty in the gun, dropping back with time, and that pass is incomplete. In the general vicinity of Kenneth Jones, there's another flag down. Holding here. That's the Klein. Fourth down. All right, Rob. So we see on back-to-back -back plays, holding calls on West Bloomfield, and that's a great sign for the Adams defensive line. It means they're starting to get a pass rush. Yeah, they're starting to bring heat. They're doing some twisting up front, creating some issues for that offensive line of West Bloom. So the Adams Highlander starting to settle in against a West Bloomfield team that they have already beaten this season. But in a weird way, it feels like Adams is the underdog tonight with how well West Bloomfield is playing. Christian Schomer, the punt returner for Adams. Michael Williams, the punter for West Bloomfield. Schomer lets it bounce. Takes a very good West Bloomfield bounce. And Adams will start inside their own 35. Adams gets a defensive stop with the benefit of a big holding call. Their offense on the field when you come on back. West Bloomfield came into this season minus their longtime head coach, Ron Bellamy, who ran the program for 11 seasons, where he built a very notable program and brought them their first state championship just last year. 
Now he's the wide receiver coach at Michigan. And with that, he passed the baton on to his defensive coordinator, Tyrese Grice, who coached with Ron for eight seasons. Now I asked Coach Well, have you felt any pressure coming in as head coach? And he said, no, not really. I mean, obviously I don't want to screw up, but he helped build this program with Ron Bellamy, so he knows how things work. But he wants to put his own spin on things. Their coaching styles are very different. Coach Grice said his practices are a little bit more physical, and he and Ron Bellamy would always play good cop, bad cop. Ron was always the good cop, so he said, well, now I'm a head coach. I got to play the good cop now, you guys. Brooke, thank you. He may have to play bad cop after this play. Parker Pico, the best offensive play of the game for Adams, and that ground attack is getting cranked up. And that's the speed of Pico. People don't understand until you play him. He has really good speed. Once he gets to the corner, nice job outside blocking by his teammates. Then he does a rest on his own. Really good shift of gears. But that was, you know, Marco DeCreasy did a really nice job. And also Kristen Schomer. you got to have receivers that are going to block in the edge. When you run an option that's going to get wide, those are tough blocks. You have to stay in your block for so long as a receiver, and they did it that time. It's Adams' offense starting to find its footing. Pico running again. Got a block from his brother and gained a good chunk on first down. Rob, do you ever think in the midst of a game, Parker and Tate, ever look at each other and go, it's kind of cool that we're playing together in big games like this? I don't know. If it was my brother, I'd probably be complaining about something he was doing. <laughs> you know how brothers are <laughs> sometimes. He's your worst critic as your brother. Now, that's got to be so sweet for them. And, you know, they've been joined basically to being twins their entire life. So I don't think this is anything really new. But I know one thing. They're both really good players. <laughs> Standing next to each other in the shotgun. Tate is blocking for Parker again. Parker Pico lowering the shoulder. And it's close to another first down for Adams. Parker Pico, who's going to play college sports down at Alabama as a baseball player, he's playing a heck of a quarterback this season. Maybe Nick Saban may need him at some point, Rob Rubin. Yeah, and those stats kind of tell the tale. They don't throw it a lot, only 16 completions, four touchdowns, but rushing yards, over 1,000 yards rushing. He is the main option in this offense. Hankey will get some yards, and all, you know, also they'll run, sometimes they'll run some jet, but mostly it's going to be the quarterback carrying the load, as we've seen here. Enke gets the give on third and short, and it looks like he has enough. Brandon Davis Swain, a fast rising sophomore, mm -hmm. helped to clog up that hole, but good news for Adams, they move the sticks. Well, Brandon Davis Swain, a sophomore, 6'4, 230. I think I was in my second year in the NFL before I was that big. <laughs> He's in high school. He's a sophomore, 6'4", 230. You got Jeremiah Smith at 6'1", 315. And they've done their job. There has not been much between the tackles for this Adams team here tonight. It's been slow going, half a yard, yard here. They've made their money on the perimeter. Pico keeps, lowers his shoulder, gains a few. Those are the types of runs and the types of plays, Rob, with that action. You see the motioning Christian Schomer. Feels like they're setting something else up for later on well, in the I, game. I was just going to say that, but thank you for doing it for me. You're welcome. I was going to tell you, you see a lot of that jet motion. They pull, they pull, they pull. Sooner or later, they're going to give it. If they see those defensive ends start to cheat down because they keep pulling it and running inside, sooner or later, coaches in the booth say, okay, listen now. They're starting to squeeze. Give it. Oh, my goodness. Pico did give it this time, but Griffin Henke met a Laker wall. Wow. That defensive line for West Bloomfield, led by Brandon Davis, Swain, just absolutely suffocated this, Henke. And this is midline veer, so they're going to run it. They're trying to read the defensive tackle. He takes the back. you got to pull it. And that time, I'm not sure if Pico was trying to pull it, but what happened was they get there so quick. When Smith got there so quick... It just blew the play up. And you get to that mesh point against any Veer team, and you can get to the mesh point before the quarterback can get the ball really in there. He tackled two people, basically. And there was nowhere to go. If Adams snaps it one more time before the quarter ends, they will. 
Pico keeps. Going to the outside. Stretches across the 20-yard line as B.J. Rankin makes the tackle. It's going to be fourth down for Adams when we start the second quarter. West Bloomfield struck first. Dylan Tatum got loose and ran 24 yards to the end zone. But the Adams Highlanders have settled in. A huge fourth down to start the second quarter. And you come on back to Rochester. Start of the second quarter here at Adams High School in Rochester. And the entire Highlanders community playing with something else on their minds tonight. The entire Rochester Adams community and all of us at Valley Sports Detroit are asking for your sincere help. Brendan Santo, a graduate of Adams High, was last seen on Michigan State's campus on Friday night, October 29th, heading towards the Brody neighborhood just before midnight. Brendan was visiting his friends on Michigan State's campus wearing a black T-shirt, gray sweats, black Red Wings hat. If you have any more info, please contact the MSU police tip line at 844-996-7873. You can also email tips at police.msu.edu. Your tip can be anonymous, and there's a $5,000 reward to anyone with some information that can bring Brendan home. The Adams football team wearing decals on their helmets tonight. We are all thinking of Brendan, and this is one of those events in life that reminds us that it's just a football game. Our thoughts, our prayers are with the entire Santo family, with the entire Adams community on what is something that you just don't want to imagine can happen to anybody. Back to football and a huge fourth down. Adams has converted a couple of third downs already on this drive. Parker Pico hoping to throw. Rolls away from pressure. Throws incomplete. That surge from Michael Williams wrecked the play from the get-go, and West Bloomfield gets a big stop. Uh, West Bloomfield gets lucky because I thought they jumped into the neutral zone. Obviously, they did it because the officials had a good look at it. When they motion, they're going to see Michael Williams come in number three. I talked about how you can disengage. He does a good job stretching it out. They also get pressure from Kyle Johnson. And Michael Williams did a nice job of keeping contained and making Pico bubble. You can't let him get his shoulder square up the field because then he can also run the ball, tuck it, and maybe pick up the first down. Tony Petrito's offense just had their best drive of the game, but it ends inside the red zone of West Bloomfield. Marquez Nance joined by Kenneth Jones. Nance hoping to throw, loads and goes deep, and Samaj Morgan makes an outstanding catch. That's tough. Christian Schomer, excellent position, but once again, really good athletes you can beat good defense. And Schomer has good shoulder technique in the trail position, and this is a really well-thrown ball by Rick Nance, and Samaj Morgan goes up and gets it. And look, I mean, the coverage is there. It's tough. One of those deals where you throw it up and ask your athlete to make a play. Morgan just made one heck of a play on, as you said, really good coverage. Yeah, good job, and he just throws it to the middle of the field. No safety high. A lot of space for Smaj to work. West Bloomfield hasn't had to throw it a ton tonight, but that was quite the highlight. They're throwing again. Nance evacuates the pocket. Running for his life like Kyler Murray and throwing across the middle. It's incomplete. Samaj Morgan dropped it that time. You can't make highlight plays on every play, Samaj. No, you can, and, and the pressure was really coming. And that's tough because Alex DeGree could beat his man, and he was kind of grabbed around the waist. He's looking for a call. Did not get the holding call, and that allowed the play to be extended by Rick Nance, who unbelievably found someone coming across. Was that DeAndre Hill? Who was coming? I'm trying to think it was a Morgan. Morgan. I'm Samaj Morgan coming across. You know, working back to the quarterback in the scramble situation. A good job by Morgan working back, giving your quarterback an out. Tatum motions. They give it to Dylan Tatum. Adams pushing him to the outside. And a flag behind the play as Dylan gained a couple. Maybe getting holding again. It's just such a tough block for the old lineman on stretch plays like this. Well, Blake Nelson, the right tackle, he's going to get called on the edge. Just trying to get off. You can see right here, 
That's just tough. And that's a tough block for an offensive lineman to get to the edge and try to take on Griffin Henke, who's a, he's a smaller but more athletic. So it's tough in space to block those little guys. And I'll tell you now, Blake Nelson just got a little bit too much jersey. That's the third holding penalty on West Bloomfield combined between their last two drives. Two have been accepted. Uh, and there's been a couple others. And we saw Adams with, I think, they missed a hold on Adams on the last pass play, which was incomplete. But they had a hold on the edge as well. So a lot of grabbing going on. That's tough on the officials. You know, it's you got to keep telling the guys, listen, you keep grabbing. we got to keep throwing flags. you got you got to bring your hands and get them in the frame. Back it down in forever. Nance to throw. Morgan's wide open. Samaj Morgan spun away from one. Got away from a couple more. And you got an athlete like that, get him the ball and let him go. Samaj is a difference maker. We gave Dylan Tatum a lot of love, but Samaj Morgan's a special talent as well. And another well-thrown ball by Rick Nance. Look at this. In space. I'm going to go in. I'm going to go out. Good luck getting me. I'm just quicker than you are right now. And that's tough. It took three Highlanders to get him out of bounds finally. That's what we talked about. One of the keys is the gang's all here. You better gang tackle because if you miss in space, before you know it, they're going to the house. Third down and seven. Nance rolling away again. Throwing a deep, spiraling ball. Jump ball. It's incomplete. Oh. And another flag. Hoping for Tatum. Schomer on the coverage. And they're going to get the senior. Oh, that's tough. Tough call on Christian Schomer. We're going to look at the replay, hopefully, and get a better look because he had Tatum man-to-man. And Schomer, once again, he got he got a suspect a little bit early on against Samaj Morgan. Boy, that's that's a really good play, I think. I, I think, you know, the officials, like everyone else, they can miss calls. I, I think that's a missed call. I mean, in the replay, look, you can't play it much better than Christian did. And he's not, he doesn't have the hook with his right arm. Sometimes, Evan, you get the hook on the right arm, they'll call you. He didn't have the hook in. He had his right hand uh, kind of touching the back a little bit. And Tony Petrito is not happy with that call. That's, that's a tough call. That's... I try to read his lips and repeat you know, what he's saying, but they no, pull me off. Oh, yeah, we can, can't do that. But that's a tough call because, remember, their opening drive they scored. They got the, the call as well. Now, that time they had third down and five. It was going to be fourth and five. The West Bloomfield gets a call, and their drive is still going. Ants gives. Tatum finds room. Dylan Tatum stutter stepping and cruising to the end zone. This guy's almost impossible yeah. to stop. And it's almost after a tough penalty against Adams. You know teams will go for the jugular? Well, after both penalties, they give the ball to Tatum. And he scored on both plays following the penalties. And this is just, like I said, he likes to show you inside, use his speed, bounces to the edge. It's a great block by number one, Samaj Morgan. Also a good block in the edge by Amir Herring, number 56. You see Ryan Rose getting a block. Touchdowns happen for a reason. Not just because guy's a good runner, because he's getting help from his friends up front. There's only one senior on the offensive line for West Bloomfield. They are growing, developing, and getting better with every single game they play. A bad snap. West Bloomfield hoping for magic. A wobbling duck is incomplete. And there's another flag. I think we're going to see legal man downfield on this. Because Adrian that took Epps. so long. I mean, yeah. it might have been a legal touch. It might have been a lineman that hit the ball. I think it's going to be against West Bloomfield. And that's exactly what it is. Tapping the top of the head. Legal man downfield. He declined. So we see a 13-0 lead. And Coach Grice right there has got to be pretty happy with his Lakers with a 13-0 lead. And a lot of it is because this guy right here, number five, Mr. Dylan Tatum, the future Sparty, doing some work on the chilly Friday night in Rochester. Everybody, the most magical weekend of the year for high school football fans is nearly here. Valley Sports Detroit and Football Fridays continues throughout the state playoffs. We'll reach our conclusion at Ford Field with eight state title games in a couple of weeks. The finals air Friday, November 26th, Saturday, November 27th. 
beginning at 10 a.m. both days. We'll crown champs in Divisions 1 through 8 on Valley Sports and the Valley Sports app. For the full schedule, go to MHSA.com. And how lucky am I, Evan? I get to do two more games with you and also with my Eastern Michigan partner, Matt Shepard, the voice of the Detroit Tigers on television. You know, I, get a lot of, I get a lot of people say, man, I like your broadcast. Well, it's pretty easy when you work with guys that know what they're doing. <laughs> Thank God I slept Rob at 20 in the break. <laughs> in all seriousness, Rob, yeah. cannot wait for that in a couple of yeah, weeks. There's a couple it's... of guys who played high school football in this state ourselves. That truly is a weekend where we all sit out and watch the games. We can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, the closest I ever got to the Silver Dome when I was in high school was when we went to Cedar Point. We drove down 75 by it. It's kind of a joke. I was, nah, was going to okay, say, the Silver really Dome and Cedar Point are not close. Well, yeah, but I went by it on the way to Cedar Point. That was a bit of a mistake by Rochester Adams on the kickoff. Looked like Marco DeCreasy touched the ball. I think they threw the flag, though, and it will end up being decent starting field position for Adams. Well, this is a huge drive now. I, at the risk of sounding like Tony Romo and say, this is a big drive, Jim. Uh, it is a big drive in the sense that Adams isn't a team that can play from behind extremely well. They're a run-based team. They're a team that's going to go three, four, pop a 15-yard run here and there, put, you know, eat the clock up, move down the field. Well, all of a sudden, they're trading by two scores. It puts a little bit more pressure on you to finish one of these drives. Last drive was pretty effective. They got down there, the fourth down play. They were unable to convert. They got nothing out of it. So let's see what Tony Petrudo can dial up on this drive for this offense. Up here in Oxford have been the victims for these Adams Highlanders in the first two rounds of the playoffs, but it's a team that this season is not used to playing from behind. Right in the middle of the D-line, West Bloomfield jumped. I think it was Jeremiah Smith, 54. When you're 315 pounds, it's not like you're going to hide in there either. Jeremiah came across. He, he got, I don't know if it was on the last series, or someone kind of jumped. They made, didn't get quite into the neutral zone. So good job with the hard count by Parker Pico. And that's what you need. Now you got first and five. Maybe you take a shot. Maybe you look for pre-score. And the big, tall, wide receiver, bring him into the, the fold here and take a shot down the field. He's going to have man outside. No middle help, no safety help. I'll keep it on the ground. Pico pitching it out to Christian Schomer. That was a low run play. First down for Adams. Moving toward midfield again. When we talk about running midline veer, well, this time this is, this is a different veer. This is the wider veer you're going to see. He rides it off the tackle. He pulls it. Now he's covered, and he pitches it. That's the tri They went to the third option in the triple option. Nice job by Parker Pico. Seeing what's there and taking what's there. Found Christian Schomer on that pitch. Christian is one of six kids. God bless the parents of that grocery bill. Pico kept the ball amidst a massive humanity. And Adams gains a few on first down. Rochester Adams in a beautiful area of Metro Detroit. Glad to be here the last couple of days and check out this awesome campus. Just over 1,500 at Adams High, built in 1970. Tony Petrito has built quite the program here. They made the playoffs 22 times overall, won the state championship in his first season, 2003. This is a bit of a return to form for Adams High School this season. First time they made the regional since 2013. Griffin Henke on the give. That looks like the Adams offense we've seen all year. It's going to be third down and very short. Mm -hmm. Rob, well, there's no way in the yeah. world you're not running it here. Yeah, I think short, some, right? people, some people like to think you're going to take a shot down the field, but not in this offense. And you're not exactly gouging them inside for those one, two-yard gains right now, so I think I'm going to take my chances and run it here, move the sticks, and then maybe on first down if you want to take a shot. But Tony Petrillo has played this offense pretty close to the vest. He's only thrown this game when he's absolutely had to on that fourth and five. They'll try the outside. Schomer slipped that tackle somehow. B.J. Rankin can't believe it. He had him in the backfield for a loss, but Christian got just enough. That young man pretty much did it on his own that time because West Bloomfield does a great job of coming up and filling from the secondary. B.J. Rankin, he's able to make B.J. miss, and you know finally Corey Garrison comes in and brings him down by that little extra effort, moved the sticks. The Adams drive is alive. Henke 
up the middle. Man, when this offense is working, it seems like on command they can get three, four, five yards with just a simple give right up the middle. I'm not going to say that you want your fullback or the one back in this option offense that you want him coming off the ball, but we get a chance. We're going to take a look here sometime in the next few plays here. We're going to chance. We'll take a look at t Taylor, or, um, uh, rather uh, Griffin Henke's stance. He's in the sprinter stance. It looks like Usain Bolt getting ready to run the hundred. We're going to look here hopefully in the next couple plays. Griffin's parents are very happy you just uh, compared their son to Usain Bolt. This time they give it to Schomer, and this time he's not going anywhere. Take two, and K.J. Johnson brings him to the turf. Coach Grice has done a great job with this young team, but here's a here's a look. Look at this. The sprinter stance. He's going forward. There's no going sideways out of that stance. But what a good job West Bloomfield, you know, Coach Grice has done with this young team of defending the counter. A couple times they tried to run that with a fake it inside, and they'll bring the little wing coming off the counter to the weak side. They've had two linebackers there to greet it. It has gone nowhere. Now it puts them in a situation they don't want to see, a third down and eight. So let's look at Prescorn. Cyborg's pretty good in this situation. You've got some guys that can make plays. You're going to have to utilize them here. Pico runs on third down, and Michael Williams greets him. Felt like the type of play where Adams is trying to set up a fourth down and shorter, but it did not go according yeah, to plan. You're going to punt here. I mean, you got fourth down and eight. You're not showing it. It's going to be the pooch. I think they'll show them like they're going to go for it. But you you got to flip the field and try to pin them up. Now, West Bloomfield's not buying that they're going for it here. You look at they got the deep safety. They are going for it. And run an option left. It's a disastrous decision. West Bloomfield stops them short. Wow, interesting. I thought I would have bet my house they were going to pooch punt it. They saw Dylan Tatum drop way back, but you still got 10 guys in West Bloomfield, to their credit, were very disciplined. They played it honestly defensively. And there's really no way they tried to run option left to the short side of the field, and there was nothing there. And here it is. He's trying to run option, but look at the great job by Corey Garrison to getting out and taking that lane away that Pico was looking for. I mean, there's nowhere to go. You can't pitch it. It was a good job on the edge as well, so well defended, and West Winfield flips the field quickly with that stop. Throwing on first down. It did get to Kenneth Jones somehow, but for no gain. Ball felt like it was in the air for forever. So now you wonder, Rob, what tone does this drive take for West Bloomfield? Remember, they get the ball to start the second half. So if you play this right, you don't give Adams very much time to go down the field, specifically mm -hmm. against an Adams offense that is not designed to throw it a lot. Yeah, and that's a good point. You're one first down away from pretty much going in the half at the very worst 13 to nothing because Adams doesn't have that ability, what we've seen, for the quick strike in the passing game. So they're going to have to grind it, and four or five minutes goes pretty quick in the high school level. And it's dropping way back. He throws a pick. Parker Pico, the quarterback on the other side, picks off Rick Nance, and that is exactly what Adams needed. Once again, we talk about players making plays. They happen because of other players making plays. Alex the Greek, number 79, we talked to him in the open. He's going to come from the right side of your screen. He beats the block easily of Jordan King and then he puts a pressure in an ill-advised throw by Rick Nance and Parker Pico the quarterback safety gets the interception and boy that is a huge play we just talked about the possibility of West Winfield Evan he brought up they could have got a first down to kind of shoot away that and then punt it and made Adams go the distance now Adams is working the short field on the 33 yard line heading in do they take advantage Parker Pico, fresh off the pick, is back on the field to trigger the offense. It's in his gut, and he doesn't gain very much. Davis Swain again. Well, you got Davis Swain and Garrison and Johnson. And Harris. These guys are filling, they are reading, and they are believing. There's no Ghostbusters now. They're not chasing it. They are reading their keys, and they are filling. They see those the guard, backside guard tackle try to pull. They're they're beating to the spot and clogging things up. And Parker Pico is thinking, you know what? When we played in the first game of the year, I don't remember this. I remember a lot of lanes being there and a lot of creases. There's that much 
room inside against this Laker defense. Why does he have not taken a shot at preschool down the field? Look at that big, tall receiver. They're still running, trying the right side this time. Pico does a nice job getting across the 30. Bad news for him as there's a flag behind the play. Yeah, they're going to get a hold. Coming up that time, that was Adrian Epps, number 23 for the Lakers. He got held. He, he was the force coming up quickly. Here they go block in the back on the offense. 10-yard penalty. Uh, it's a, you know, I, I call it a hold. I mean, he comes up, and you're going to see here Epps, number 23, on the right side. He's going to come off his cornerback position. He's going to force it. And right, oh, you just kind of missed him there. You can see him in the right corner of your screen. He's the one that gets blocked, pushed in the back. That's worse than a hold, obviously. It's five extra yards. And Adams, a team that has thrown it two times, three times the whole game. Oh, well, they're going to need to. Yeah. It, it, you know, this pre scoring kid, you know, talked to coach, said he has a lot of confidence that he can high point the ball. He's six foot four, six foot five. Give him a shot, throw it down there. Let's see if they give him a shot. Pico throwing in that direction. It's knocked away. Well, they're trying to they tried to run him off with speed and ran the comeback. A lot of people you have to be older remember the comeback is now everyone throws the back shoulder throw. That's truly a comeback. Where Prescore took the high shoulder of the defensive back. He sprinted about 15 yards and snapped it to the boundary. And it, it just wasn't there. Good coverage. He wasn't able to get the defensive back's hips turned. He wasn't believable enough. It wasn't fast enough to threaten him. And it brings up a third down and long. And now I wonder, Rob, it's third and forever. Maybe you run it, try to catch him off guard and set up a pooch punt, flip field position. We'll see what happens here. He probably had Michael Williams, number three, because he's going to be bringing it. They will run it with Henke, try to get him on a quick hitter. And Griffin does a nice job to get across the 40 and set up a fourth down and shorter. Well, they're inside the 40 now. I think you're going to see him again show that formation. The last time I thought they were going to pooch it, but it was fourth down and eight, I believe. This is fourth and 13, 14, 14. That's tough. But Tony Petrito might also be saying, you know what? We're down 13 nothing. He's got confidence. They haven't been hurt defensively. Let's think about it. There's been three offensive plays by West Bloomfield and two big penalties. That's been their offense. So defensive, you've been pretty sound, so maybe he will take a shot here. He's still a gambling man. Pico stepping up, throwing down the middle. How about that? First down, Adams. Christian Schomer, the biggest play of the game for Adams High. And Parker Pico does a good job. He doesn't panic in the pocket. A lot of quarterbacks, they feel any type of pressure. They want to get out of there, get away from it. But watch what he's going to do. He's just going to step up a little bit, buy himself a little bit more time, and allow Schomer to, to find the crease in the middle of the field. Dylan Tatum comes up and tackles him, but what a big play with 3.15 to go here on a fourth and 14, steps up, delivers the ball. It's just like turning a double play for that baseball player, huh? He just kind of catches it, moves up a little bit, uses his feet. Back to the ground. Henke is just working his tail off down there, surging across the 15. But that's a great play. That's five yards on first down. That's what they've gotten away from. They've had just poor first down plays, which has gotten behind the sticks. Now that time, second and five, you can stay with your standard offense. You're running the clock down with 244 and counting here in the first half. There's no hurry. There's no rush. A good look at Tony Petrito. He's thinking, boy, this would be nice to get seven here. It really changed the whole attitude and the, you know, possibly the eventually the outcome of this game. Nico keeps this time. And a shift his way away from Dylan Tatum. This play's still going. What a lean forward by Parker yeah. Pico. This is one of the plays I struggle with, and every time I see it, I, I really think when I played, you couldn't push the pile. And the problem with pushing the pile is a lot of times you're running back, his legs aren't driving. He may not even have control of his body anymore. He's caught up in the wash, and people can get injured. And that's what happens here a little bit. You see Henke is stopped. And, I mean, sorry, rather, Pico is stopped. He spins a little bit. That play is done right there. Now you get all the linemen come in. They start pushing them. Parker Pico is not moving that pile. That is the offensive lineman, and that is called rugby. So, <laughs> I don't know, that's like a scrum. 
Brian Henry was in my ear telling me that's a great sport. Okay, Brian, I'm sure you played a lot at, at Brother Rice. We didn't have the rugby at Lapeer. I was looking for rugby scrum <laughs> on that play. Parker Pico stopped after a short game. Look, Rob, this is yeah. such an oh, important huge. part of the game because West Bloomfield's getting the ball to start the second half. Adams, they need a touchdown. Yeah, absolutely. You don't even want a field goal attempt. You down 13 to nothing. You want seven points. And I like Tony Petrino doing a great job in clock management. Just running it down and see, like, we're going to get points or no one's going to get points. Are you surprised West Bloomfield's not calling a timeout here? Yeah, yeah. Do they have two? How many do they have left? They have all of them. All of them, yeah. I'm surprised because the clock means nothing to Adams. It really doesn't. They have plenty of time to do what they want. But it could, you could steal a possession if you are West Bloomfield. But they got looking outside nice and wide. They're on the ground. And Pico falls on the ball. That was almost a nightmare. Well, I think he'd have been better off to give it to Hanky. Now, I think I wasn't paying attention. I didn't read the tackle. So you're going to look, get a look here. Is, uh, if he gives that to Hanky, whoa, they get lucky. And that lucky break for the uh, Highlanders. But uh, it's t do or die, I think, right now offensively for Adams. As they get a chance here, third down and goal to close within 13 to 7. Only eight teams left in Division One. Adams and West Bloomfield slinging it out on a chilly Friday night in Rochester. Winner of this game gets the winner of Rockford Grand Blank, who are playing tomorrow. At halftime, Rob and I are going to go through all of the scores in the games going on tonight across our great state. It's getting to be winning time. In this part of November, Rob, so many great games, so many great teams. And now we look to a monster play in this game, third and goal for Adams inside yeah. the red zone. And this is going to dictate whether or not they go for it on fourth. I think if they can, if they can get inside the two-yard line or three-yard line, there's a good chance that Tony Petrita will go for the touchdown. If they don't get any positive yards here, I wouldn't be surprised to see him try to take the three. But if you're Tony Petrito, yeah, I know. what are you calling on a play to get a touchdown or at least get closer to maybe go for it on fourth down? What are you doing? Well, they play a lot of man. Oh, so when you play a lot of man, if you want to try, you can run people off. Now, the bad news is you're not running them off very far because you're on the 12-yard line, 11-yard line. I like screens. People don't like to screen in the red zone because they say people are dropping off. But when they play man, this is a very aggressive front. They're going to get up the field. And if you get alignment on the backer who's man-to-man -man with the running back, who the screen's going to go to, if you just chip him at all, you can get a big play, possibly get into the end zone. Tony Petrito's been in a lot of big games and a lot of big moments. He's not going to coach scared. Let's see what he draws up on third down and goal. Pico dropping back, looks right side, it's caught. Adams is short of the end zone. Joey oh. Shallow makes a catch, and now you got a decision to make. Uh, there's no decision. You're on the four yard, and I go for it. Because what this does is it still allows you to use your run game. And besides a pass game, now if you're on the 12 yard line, your probably takes the option out of it, but you can still run option. You can maybe run that sprint option we've seen him do sometimes. Or you can try to catch him inside, but those defensive tackles have been doing a great job for the Lakers. They, they're not buying any of the fakes or clogging things up. So Tony Petrito kind of going to maybe use a timeout here. Yeah, that's what he's going to do to talk it over with his staff. Adams calls a timeout before maybe the biggest play of their season. Down by two scores, facing fourth and goal as the first half winds down. Come on back. Fourth and goal for Adams. Adams just took a timeout to get ready to go before fourth and goal. West Bloomfield leading this ball game 13-0, Rob. Adams called their final timeout of the first half. Tony Petrito wants to make sure that his guys are ready to go before this huge play. You may be at home if you're just tuning in. Wait, why is Adams going for it on fourth and goal with the first half still going on? Well, it's because they can't stop Dylan Taylor. Yeah, number five is pretty good last time I checked. he uh, He's a playmaker. He's made two huge plays in this game. Being able to bounce it outside using his speed. Picks up some good blocks down the field by Samaj Morgan, his wide receiving buddy. But 
it, it's just, uh, it's been an interesting half. It's a 13 nothing game, but it doesn't feel like West Bloomfield's been in control because Adams has had the ball quite a bit. The problem is they're getting their yards between the 20s. They've moved down across, you know, in the positive territory two or three times, but they haven't been able to finish drives to get any points. And West Bloomfield's hit him with some big plays, got a couple penalties called in there, and before you know it, it's 13 nothing Lakers. But this is a big play, as you stated, Evan. Parker Pico on fourth down and goal. Throws toward the end zone. It's incomplete. Looking for Christian Schomer, and West Bloomfield gets the stop. And I'm not sure Schomer's going to score if he catches that because he had to open up and turn back to Pico, which kind of loses your speed. And by the time he would have squared himself up, there was pressure coming from the secondary. It's one of those ones, if it's a perfect pass, if he can get it in stride outside, he's got an opportunity. But you can see right there coming up, in the secondary was Caden Tucker, number seven. He's applying pressure. A really good pass. I think it's going to be close. They're going to meet at the goal line, and maybe, maybe Schomer can get in. But it's just a little bit behind him, and that's not that my young man's strength throwing the football. He's definitely a running quarterback. Even with two timeouts, Wes Bloomfield will knee on it here to end the half. They're getting the ball to start the second half. I think that's smart. I mean, nothing really is going to good happen from your own three yard line. <laughs> up a turnover and you go in you're up 13 nothing coach grice knows he's going to get the ball to start the second half and i think our brooke fletcher hopefully will grab coach grice heading into the locker room and have a chat with him a little bit evan and find out his thoughts on the first half he's, he's got to be pretty pleased with the difference he's seen how his team has done such outstanding jobs defending this beer offense here's a look at coach grice First year head coach, but he's been on this staff for the last eight seasons. He used to be the head coach at Detroit Renaissance, so he's got some experience leading a program. The Rochester Adams Highlanders are going to the locker room, a bunch that has to be frustrated. They've gotten in the red zone twice, but they have not scored a single point through the first 24 minutes of football. Yeah, that's just a tribute to Coach Grice and his staff. They looked at that first game and said, whoa, 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 this, this can't happen again. Now, fellas, look at what you're doing wrong. This is what you can do, and this will give you a much better opportunity to stop this Veer offense. West Bloomfield leads by 13 after 24 minutes of football. And Tyrese Grice, the Lakers head coach, standing by with Brooke. Coach, solid performance from your defense in the first half, coming up huge with that big stop on the last drive. Mm -hmm. How can you keep that momentum going in the second half? I'll just continue doing what we're doing, stick with the game plan. Our game plan that we put in is working. So we just got to make sure we contain that quarterback uh, and keep putting pressure on him, make him throw on the run so he's not as accurate when he's throwing on the run. And again, shut down the running game, which we've successfully done so far. Well, offensively, Dylan Tatum coming up huge with two touchdowns. What do you need to see from your offense in order to maintain the lead and take this thing home? Um, you, you know, the, the penalties, the turnovers, we got to reduce those. Those things are hurting us right now. Uh, we killed some drives that we was uh, sustaining. So we just got to continue doing what we're doing and stick with our game plan. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Evan, back to you. Brooke, thank you. Coach Grice knows, although his team's up by a couple of scores, this game is not over. To knock off an undefeated Adams team, they need a final punch in the second half. A couple of scores for Dylan Tatum. The future Spartan has the Lakers on top of the break. The fourth annual Legacy Senior All-Star Game will be hosted this upcoming November 28th in Brighton at the Legacy Center Sports Complex. And the event will once again be televised on Valley Sports Detroit. 80 of Michigan's best graduating seniors from across the state will strap their helmets on for the final time and showcase their skills for a statewide audience. Nominations are open and will be taken online at LegacyFootballOrg.com. Click the homepage and click the nomination link. Selection to be announced in early November. It's halftime here at Adams High. We have the Highlanders marching band putting on quite the performance for fans. We have a lot more to come. Stick around. season is upon us. Valley Sports Detroit and Football Fridays will continue throughout the MHSAA State Playoffs. 
reaching its conclusion at Ford Field with eight state championship games. The finals will air on Friday, November 26th and Saturday, November 27th, beginning at 10 a.m. both days, where we'll crown champions in divisions one through eight on Valley Sports and the Valley Sports app. For the full schedule, go to MHSAA.com. All right, we have tons of great games going on across the state of Michigan. When we come back, Rob and Evan will break down the scores and the games. Stick around. The Adams Marching Band entertaining all of us here at Adams High School. Pretty entertaining ball game so far. West Bloomfield leading Adams 13-0 at the break. Evan Stockton, Rob Rubick back with you. Glad you're joining us on a Friday night, wherever you may be. Rob, let's get a look at the Division I scoreboard. Only one other game going on tonight. Sterling Knight Stevenson and Macomb Dakota are playing a heck of a ball game at the half, huh? Yeah, that's, is that a conference game? Uh, they're in the third round. I think they play in the same conference. They play in the, the Macomb, the Mac Red Conference. So that's amazing that you still have two teams from the same conference in the third round. But that just shows you the depth and the strength of the, the Mac Red as well. So, yeah, one of those teams is going to come out next week and get the opportunity to take on, I believe it would be the winner of the Belleville Forts in the bottom half of our bracket looking there. So mm -hmm. the track, which are coming up tomorrow, we got a couple games. You got Grand Blank. You got the Bobcats heading across the take take on the Rams. The Bobcats led by Elijah Jackson Anderson. This young man is heading to Eastern Michigan and we're going to be glad to take him. Coming to Ypsilanti to the factory to play for Chris Creighton. So uh, this is interesting. And then you got Ahern, the quarterback, Zach Ahern for Rockford. Big, strong, fast. There's a look at Elijah Anderson Jackson coming. Elijah Jackson Anderson rather. And then you have the, the tractors of Forts and taking on Belleville. Tomorrow, Belleville with ton of talent, but that man right there, he has a little bit of his own. I had the chance to call him the first game of the year when they when they uh, when they uh, played Canton, and he had a huge game and showed why he's worth every bit of the press and praise that he gets. But Belleville just loaded with talent. Three players in the top what, 10 rated in the state coming from Belleville? So very interesting. I mean, look, they beat Michigan. That was Michigan they were playing right there, right? Could I, have I don't Celine. think they were playing been, Michigan. Might have been no. Celine. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, some good matchups tomorrow. And then you have you have uh, Division Two here. You have De La Salle taking on Roseville. But let's look at some of the scores. Oh, my. Traverse City Central. Oh, my. Which is having jo statistically one of the greatest offensive seasons in the history of Michigan. Wow. Led by Josh Burnham, who's going to Notre Dame. That's a stunning no, this, score. Caledonia's only loss this year is to Rockford. Yeah, for, what was it, like 13-10 or 14-10 or yeah, something? Yeah, it came right they down to the wire. 17-14. But, yeah, that, that amazes me. Josh Burnham, the quarterback slash linebacker for Traverse City Central. I thought Caledonia, I really thought, would win that game going in as a favorite. That's a halftime score. De La Salle better be careful. Everyone's crowning the Pilots king champion already because I think Traverse City Central. Look what they did to Brother Rice. I mean, they came. To, Brother Rice had to go up there late in the year, and they just, I don't know if they had running clock on Rice, but they just pounded them. They put 50 on Brother Rice, and you look at Mott and Lavonia Franklin having a good game. And then you have Portage Central and South Lion. Also, South Lion has kind of been under the radar this year. Yeah, you talked about De La Salle, who is one of the best teams, regardless of division, in the state of Michigan, out of the mighty central division of the Catholic League. Roosevelt's got a quite yeah, a tall task and, against those pilots tomorrow. Well, and you know, Dan Roan came over from Grand Rapids West Catholic, and he has just stepped it up at De La Salle. And the pilots, once again, very solid on both sides of the ball. They're not flashy, but they're going to they're going to hang 30 on you and hold you to 10 each week. They're just. But Roseville, you know, they're kind of new to the party. Seven and four, obviously, they're they're starting to peak at the right time and playing well in the playoffs. And then we go to Division Three. Some scores going on there. St. Joe not having much problem with Parma Western. You see Rice struggling with Mason in the third quarter and King, 21 nothing over Allen Park. Allen Park putting up a good fight. The Fighting Corey Schlesinger's former Detroit Lion, the weight coach at Allen Park. But that one tomorrow interests me. That is a good one, Evan. Yeah, we went up to DeWitt earlier this yes. year, and we saw them hang right. 50 that was you on you. Yeah, it yeah. was. I'm glad you remember, Rob. We obviously did a very good job together. Well, the they hung 50 on Grand Ledge in the first half. Ty Holtz, <laughs> Tommy McIntosh, Cedar Springs. Good luck, guys. Hey, That's a heck of an offense. I tell you, the, the Red Flannel City now, don't count Cedar Springs out. They do a good job. And there's the Panther, fire-breathing Panther. There's a look at Cedar Springs, and uh, 
they've had a hard, tough. They're nine and two, but they play a tough schedule. They play up. They play a lot of bigger schools as well. But DeWitt with Tommy McIntosh and Ty Holtz and Flagler, they just have a lot of weapons. Rob Zimmerman does a great job coaching them. They're a tough out for anyone, but I think it'll be competitive. I think Cedar Springs will take them and try to hang around until the fourth quarter and try to make the upset. We'll see how much uh, DeWitt has to fire up the fire-breathing ah. Panther. That is one of the favorite things I've seen on our football Fridays all fall. We'll let you do a little work here now. Okay, how about Division Four? So we're looking at the Eddies of Edwardsburg, 14-7 over Grand Rapids South Christian. Hudsonville Unity Christian, who scored 79 points in the district final last week, Rob. They're taking care of Cadillac. couple of scores they lead by in the third quarter. Oh, well, the Vikings. Is it the Vikings, I believe? Cadillac Vikings or Norse? No, I think it's the Vikings. They're doing a good job. I mean, remember, they, ups- they had a big upset last year against Edwardsburg, I believe. And Edwardsburg with Cran Rapids South Kirsten playing tough at half. Really good games. Freeland having their way a little bit with Cross Lex, but Country Day and Chelsea, the Bulldogs, growling a little bit down there, huh? Hanging with Country Day, so I like that. And uh, Hudsonville Unity Christian was my pick to win it all. Uh, they get by this week, they're going to have to take on a, a pretty good Hope Edwardsburg team if they can handle South Christian. Now, you look at Hudsonville Unity Christian, I believe during the year that they really handled Grand Rapids South Christian. Cadillac and Country Day played in the D4 final last year. They're both still alive. West Bloomfield won the Division I state championship last season. They got a knockoff undefeated Adams tonight to get back to the semis this season. And Dylan Tatum is doing his darndest to make sure West Bloomfield can get back there. He scored twice in the first half. What does he have in store for us when the second half starts next? Fridays on Bally Sports are brought to you by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. The vaccine is our way out of COVID-19. Find your vaccine at michigan.gov slash COVID vaccine. And by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Think Ford first. The Adams Highlanders out of the locker room getting ready for the second half. Their undefeated magical season has reached the second half. They're down by two scores. West Bloomfield coming back. Welcome back. Second half about to get underway here in a minute, but I am with Coach Petrito now. Coach, the offense was able to move the ball in the first half, but what do you need to see from them in the second half in order to finish those drives? Uh, got to execute. Um, you know, they're a good defense. They're playing fast. They made some nice adjustments from the first game. Um, we got to get our blocks, finish each play, and get the ball in the end zone and get back in this one. Dylan Tatum, two touchdowns in the first half. How can that defense slow him down? You know, we were there. We just got to put the ball down. He's a very gifted kid, but we can't miss tackles against a guy like that. All right, thank you so much, Coach. Evan, up to you. Brooke, thanks. Coach Tony Petrito knows the score here. Let's get a look at our game summary brought to you by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Rob Adams is playing pretty darn well, but Dylan Tatum has just made a couple of good plays, and that's why West Bluefield's up by a couple of scores. Well, he's able to break arm tackles, even, you know, two arm tackles. It just showing great vision, great bound, go power. Look at that cut, how quickly he cuts there. And he shows the top end speed that he's not going to get caught once he breaks free. He's going to be able to finish it. And that's what we saw last year with Donovan Edwards, and that's what we're seeing with Dylan Tatum here, as you can see, as he just gets down the sideline and says, I'm just a little bit faster than the guys in the yellow is chasing me right now. But here's the stats. We're looking at the first half, Dylan. And, you know, you look at Adams, total yards, 138 to 126. As we said, West Bloom's offense has really been two run plays by Dylan Tatum and a long pass play that uh, Jamaj caught, yep. right? Samaj, rather, caught. And the other one has been the two penalties, which have really bailed them out in some drives. And the one was, I, th- I think, I don't have a problem with it. But the last one they called down here was really suspect. And that's tough. And I don't think the official had a really good angle on it at the time. So I'm not going to sit and rip on him. But as I said, when it happened, people miss calls. I mean, it happened. We drop balls, officials miss calls sometimes. So, But overall, I, I think look at the possession. And that just shows how stats can be misleading. Well, they had the 17 minutes to six. You think, okay, they're in good shape. Zero points. Yeah, I think if we showed that graphic without the score at the top of the screen, you would think, oh, Adams is winning the game, right? But as you say, just a couple of swing plays here or there, a couple of calls here or there. That's why West Bloomfield leads by 13. Colin Timko, the junior, about to send it away for Adams. That student section hoping that their boys can get back in it. Off we go in the second half from Adams High. It's a really good kick from Timko, and Tatum lets it roll through the end zone. 
Rob, this is one of those possessions for West Bloomfield and for Adams that dictates the rest of the game. What do you think the game plan is for West Bloomfield on this big possession to start the second well, half? Well, let me first state why it, it really changes the entire entirety of the game. If you allow West Bloomfield to go down here and get a touchdown, you're down 20 to nothing. You're a beer team. You're a midline beer, outside beer, some speed option. You, you don't come down from 20-point deficits. You can't do that. You're not a quick strike offense. So that's what happens here is to look for very aggressive. Keep an eye on number 79 to blow some plays up here, try to get a tackle for loss and really put West Bloomfield behind the sticks. They start with Kenneth Jones up the middle. 79 to Greek was in the vicinity of that play. It's a pretty good gain on first down for West Bloomfield, though. The Lakers have become one of the best football programs in the state of Michigan over the last half decade. They're a big school. Over 2,000 kids patrol the halls of West Bloomfield every single day on their first ever state championship against Davison last season. And springs down the high snap, and that busted the play from the beginning. Into the backfield goes Rocco Orsini, and it's third down and long for the Lakers. Good discipline by Rocco Orsini here. You're going to see the fake motion on the jet, and they give it inside to Jones. Orsini just really shooting the, the A-gap, gets into the backfield, gets penetration. And now it's going to be up to Nick Nance, uh, Rick Nance rather, to do something from his quarterback position. So if you're in this defense, you got to tell your defensive linebackers and ends, you can't start chasing. Don't get out of your lanes. You have to constrict him because if he sees a gap, he'll take off and run. Nance is by his lonesome in the shotgun. Rolling away from pressure with a flag flying. That pass is caught by Samaj Morgan. For now, it's a first down. And I don't think it's going to stand. No, they're, they're going to get uh, Jordan King, number 78, I believe. Or it might be on Blake Nelson, number 50. You look at, we talk about the Greek. Alex DeGreek, you can watch how quick he gets up the field. He makes his inside move here, and he just goes down inside. And I was right the first time. That's Jordan King who just grabs him as he goes by. And look at the speed of this young man. And we highlight him in the open for a reason. He's a player. We highlighted Dylan Tatum in the open for a reason. He's a player. And they both haven't, uh, haven't let us down at all. They've lived up to billing so far. What you don't see on that graphic is that Alex DeGreek had five sacks last week for Adams. He's going to Harvard. I hear that's a decent place to get a DeGreek. <laughs> I heard they're good at networking. Nance swings it far side, setting up a screen with another flag down, still keeping the play alive. Dylan Tatum does get back to the original line of scrimmage. I think Adams is going to decline this hold. Yeah, that's going to be another hold. They probably will. I mean, well, you can keep pushing them back. Yeah. But then I guess you risk West Bloomfield popping a big one. And that's one of the problem with these quick screens outside. Declined. Fourth down. When you run these quick screens, you're going to look right where the nice job getting the ball off by Nance. He gets it in space, and you can see right here to your. See number 19 there, Nick Patera getting grabbed a little bit. Also number 13. You know, those aren't those aren't real bad. Looks like the hands were kind of in the framework. The biggest thing is, I played seven years in the NFL, Evan. I didn't get a holding call because I grab inside. Once they start beating you, just let go. You just can't be stubborn. You can't you gotta let go of that mesh. The Williams back to punt. He sends it away. It's a short one. Everybody on Adams gets away, and they're going to start in West Bloomfield territory. You know, every, how the game started for Adams was not what they wanted. They fumbled the opening kickoff, ended up starting their own five-yard line, gave West Bloomfield a short field, ultimately they scored on that drive. Now we're seeing similar type of deal here with the penalties by West Bloomfield. They receive the second-half kickoff. They get pent up deep. They get a poor punt. Now Adams has a short field. Can they take advantage of it? And that's what we need to see here. It's time. They've had, what, three or four possessions. They've started on the plus side of the 50. No points. They've gotten twice into West Bloomfield's red zone, but they haven't scored yet. Parker Pico throwing, and it's knocked down. Hoping for Seabor across the middle, but the D-line for West Bloomfield had their hands up. That's interesting, Colin. You're going to get a look here. Joseph Clark, number 15. On the replay, does a good job. He gets into his move, 
and defensive linemen need to realize, watch him, he's going to come in on your right. You can't see him yet. He's just kind of cat and mouse. He's not even rushing until he sees Pico load up the throw, and then he jumps and blocks it. That's a really heads up play. He was cat and mousing because he was expecting the run coming his way. They'll give it to Henke this time. Very good gain on second down, and that allows Adams on a third down and medium to really keep the entire playbook open, you'd think, Rob. Yeah, and that's the GT they talk about. They're going to pull the left side guard and tackle through the hole. Hickey's going to follow them. They had a pretty good push. They wash it out and allow them to pick up five yards. But you need positive gain here. Tony Petrito, this is almost as big as fourth down because you need to get like three yards or four yards here to give you a much better opportunity on fourth down to use that run game. If you get a TFL here and you lose yards, now you're doing something you don't want to do, and that's throw the football. Arthur Pico keeps, evades tacklers, gets the first down, and keeps the drive alive. Now, there was one play in the first half, I remember he kind of looked sneaky, but he looked really slithery here. He's giving a little bit, you're going to watch here, a little counter step, he fakes it, dodging, moving, bobbing, and weaving a good job staying on blocks inside with some of those lot, uh, offense linemen. That's uh, Tobacek doing a good job, number 68. And then it's just up to Parker Pico, and now they got the first down. Now can they continue? Can they piece these together and end up with some points? They have been living in West Bloomfield territory nearly the entire game. Thank you on the give. Nope, Pico kept it, and he didn't gain it yet. Davis Swain, number 11, off two sacks last week against CC, is turning in another good one again this week. I'm just wondering what they're doing at the mesh point because Pico seems to be a little bit confused. It seems like he should be giving it sometimes. He's pulling it and pulling it when he should be giving it. So I'm not sure what they're doing is they're not blocking the defensive tackle right where the running back's going to go. And he's going to read him. If he goes for the back, he's going to pull. But for some reason, it, it seems like he's pulling it and the defensive tackle's grabbing him. So I'm not sure what's going on. We don't, it's, you know, it's tough to see from up here. Give this time with a lot of room. Joey Shallow, great cut. Inside the 10. Adams is close again. Uh, Joey Shallow just picked up about 22 yards and ran 60 to get it, though. Because this play is going to, he's going to motion from the left to the right. And we're going to look at the replay. And they give it to him on the jet. And he goes right and he cuts back. He gets the flow. He realizes that the most space is to the left. And then that monkey jumps on his back a little bit there. He gets that, that piano. You get heavy. You feel that, that pressure coming. You start getting tired. We always said that. And now you look at here as he tries to come off. And if he could, a little bit better block, he might have got into the end zone. Give to Griffin Henke. Surging, lunging, short of the goal line. They tackle him inside the line, but the Adams Highlanders are inches away from breaking that goose egg. Yeah, it's really the first time I've seen West Bloom. look like they're on their heels a little bit. That offensive line is starting to exert itself. Quarterback sneak, Parker Pico. I know they're waiting for He's two yards in the end zone. There you go. <laughs> Touchdown, Highlanders. Well, that changes the complexion a little bit, my partner. And it all starts because of a good defensive series, a, not a great punt. You get the short field, a nice run by Pico. A nice, a nice job also, you know, showing some speed on the reverse, cutting back against um, against the green as well it was uh, Joey Shallow. And now they're going to try to make it a six-point game. Colin Timko hasn't missed a PAT all year. He's 50 for 50. And the Rochester Adams Highlanders, 11-0. They already have beaten West Bloomfield this season. You knew these boys weren't going down without a fight. They get a stop to start the second half. They get the ball, and they're right back to business. Joey Shallow, a great cut, a great run. Gets him inside the 10. They get inches away, and Parker Pico plunges in. Another touchdown, his 18th of the year, and we got a ball game again. A lot of coaches will shy away from what you've done. I covered your game, was it 03 when you had uh, Alan Guy? Yeah. yeah. 
And now he had a great number, 37. He was a quarterback. He was a Mike linebacker and quarterback. You're doing it again. You got Parker Pico, yeah. your quarterback, and he plays safety. It doesn't bother you? doesn't worry you? No, because how our style of offense, we're going to be physical anyway with our quarterback. So he's got to be a football player. And we're going to play our best 11 on both sides of the ball. Um, and we love getting our best guys out there. And you win and lose with defense, by the way. So if he's one of our best 11, he's going to play D. Well, a lot of coaches haven't would do that because your quarterback is so valuable. It, it, you, you really risk it. But in this type of offense that he runs with this option offense, he's got an elite athlete going to Alabama to play baseball. You got to play him. You got to keep him on the field. So he's a safety. He has really good speed. He gives you a lot of backup on that back end. It gives you comfort as a defensive coordinator, knowing that he can run stuff down and, and really cover a lot of grounds. And this is what Tony Petrino's done for years. We saw it with Allen Guy, middle linebacker, quarterback. Now we're seeing it again with Parker Pico. He's got a pick on defense. He's got a touchdown on offense. Tim Coe kicks it away. It is returnable for West Bloomfield. Tatum with room. Dylan Tatum breaking a couple of tackles. And he stops short of the 30. So Adam's start to the second half, Rob, is absolutely perfect. You get the stop on D and the touchdown on O. And now really for the first time since the start of the game, a little pressure again on West Bluefield. There is, and it also brings Adam offensively back to their comfort zone because now when they get the ball, it's a one-possession game. They can just keep running their power offense with that veer option. You don't feel like, oh, geez, we got to slip some passes. we got to try to catch them with a big play. But if you're West Bloomfield, you say, okay, now we have the ball. We didn't start the way we wanted. Just calm the ship. Let's, we got great athletes. Let's let Dylan Tatum, you see, into the game at tailback, do some work. Wildcat. Direct snap to Dylan Tatum. Get that guy the ball and let him go. Very good gain on first down. They did that so much with Donovan Edwards yeah. last year. Yeah, we get a chance. If we see this again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what the advantage of doing that Wildcat where you have the quarterback in the game, then you shift late. It's, they're going to ask Nance to block at the points. So you get an extra blocker at the point of attack, and we're going to see because Tatum's in the backfield again. Let's see if they move Nance or if they actually keep him as... They will give it to Tatum, and Dylan gets the first down. You know, this is not a knock on Donovan Edwards, but this is just a layman's opinion here watching this. He seems to be more of a physical running back than Donovan Edwards was. Donovan Edwards had a lot of slash and dash and tremendous, you know, had that fifth, sixth, seventh gear where he could just accelerate. But Tatum seems to explode in people's arms. He's just he's just so explosive. He runs, as you said in the first half, his pad level is incredible. He runs with such great lean. hope Donovan's not watching in his hotel room in Happy Valley. Another direct snap to Dylan Tatum. It's been all Dylan on this drive, and he gains a couple on first down. Donovan Edwards is with the Michigan Wolverines now, and last year he was a man possessed. Mr. Football in the state of Michigan was running wild across football fields all fall long. Wow, that last one, did you see the vert? He got up and over, and this is just, I'm really, really fast. There was a hole there, and meet me in the end zone, rest of my teammates. Here's my favorite run of the year from Donovan Edwards against Davison. That's just a really good athlete running by a really good team, the Davison Cardinals. Nothing but Dylan Tatum on this drive. Tate Pico slows him up and sets up a third down. Man, West Bloomfield is not going away from Dylan Tatum on this drive. Well, you know, coaches, sometimes they get pressed a little bit, and they get pushed into a corner like, oh, okay, all right. We know number five is pretty good. Let's just give him an opportunity to see if he can move the ball a little bit. Now they're giving him a rest. And let's not forget, he's been nicked a little bit here in the last four or five games of the season. He hasn't played them all. So he also, it's kind of a fine line you're walking. How much do we work him now thinking if we do win here, get to the next round, we're going to need him. He's off the field on third down. It's in the hands of Kenneth Jones the third, who doesn't have the first down. Well, this is going to be interesting now to see what Coach Grice decides to do. If he's going to bring Dylan Tatum, I've number one, I put number five back in the game. This is not a knock on Jones, number 22, but I got one of the best players in the state of Michigan. I want him back there. They're probably going to go wildcat with him and let him kind of pick it. Now, this got to be careful because he likes the bounce. We've seen him a couple of times bury it a little bit and then bounce to the edge and use his speed. Now you tell your outside linebackers, you have to set the edge tough. 
Tatum all by his lonesome. On fourth down, one. The snap right back to him. Dylan Tatum surging forward for the first down. If you want a guy to pick you up a yard and a half, two yards, number five is a pretty good choice because he runs with great explosion, great body lean. And we're going to look here coming from behind him. Does the hard count, doesn't get it. But when he decides to go, he goes. He explodes, he lowers the pad level, and he keeps fighting and picks it up by about maybe a half a yard to a yard. Enables him to move. And a pretty good push on that front, too. And you know, we've got a lot of credit to Dylan Tatum, but that time Amir Herring and Ryan Rose did a good job of getting push on the left side of that offensive line. A whole lot of ground game for West Bloomfield on this drive. Back to Dylan Tatum, who's loose. Dylan Tatum. I think he stepped out. I think he stepped out on about the five. There's a flag behind the play, too. You know, this is eerily starting to resemble a game I did with Ron Bellamy as the head coach in the state championship against Clarkston. Holy. This, the game, Clarkson won. The foul. They won three to two. But I think the Lakers of West Bloomfield had about five or six long plays in that game called back because of penalties. Now, I'm not saying they're committing them. I'm not saying they're not committing them. But it's just something when you, I guess when you run to the edge as much as they do, those are tough blocks. And those are the holding calls that are easier for officials to see, Evan. Whether they're out in the open or apparent, whether it's the deep uh, offensive tackle or tight end or the wide receiver to that edge. Yeah, you're just asking so much from a young offensive line, specifically when this entire drive they haven't tried to throw it once. Those pass blocks for linemen are a lot easier than those long run blocks when you're running to the outside. Yeah, you know, you're right. There's only one senior in that offensive line. I never noticed that. they got, you know, Jordan King at the right guard is, but you have three juniors and a sophomore. Ryan Rules, the left guard, 6'2", 300-pound sophomore. What, the year they played Clarkson, I think that was the year that their offensive line would have been the biggest in the state of Michigan, including all the colleges. <laughs> they were heavier than Michigan or Michigan State's. Nance throws. Samaj Morgan makes the catch. And Pico had a hard hit on the near side. The flag out. They might get they might get another horn. It came late. I was looking. It came the same time that Samaj Morgan was being hit. Yeah, let's see if this fouls on Pico in the hard hit. He tried to lead with his shoulder. Maybe a pick play for offensive well, pass interference. Uh, now, I'm not sure of the high school rule. It, can you block if the ball is behind the line of scrimmage? Because they were blocking when the ball was in the air. Look, the point remains, yeah. Rob, that Tyrese Grice in his offense, after a really impressive start to the drive, it's a similar story to what they had in the first half. Penalties are killing them. Oh, and that's what I said. It reminds you of the game that Ron Bellamy, that when he got in 17, 2017, he lost 3-2 to two to Clarkston. I mean, he had a lot of opportunities to score there, but just huge penalties hurt his team. This offense going in reverse. And Rice is grumbling as he walks up and down the sideline. Dylan Tatum to Nance's right in the shotgun. They shift out Nance again. Ron Tatum toward the left side, and Adams was ready. He pitched it out late to Adams, and they did throw the play back. That was a strange end to the play. Well, this is but just the a point oh, remains, sorry, Rob. This, is, this just, is going to be yeah. a third down and long for West Bloomfield. This, this is just a great job, all defensive front. You're going to watch them stretch. They read it. They feel the blocks to the outside. They fight through it. And a nice job coming up, making the play there by Griffin Henke. And then very late, after his momentum had stopped, he's being thrown backwards, the whistle blown. He pitched it out, which could have been a huge play if the whistle hadn't blown. Huge third down as we're coming down the stretch in the third. And dropping way back. The Greek is all over him! I think he's the freak, not the Greek. Oh, my. Did you see the athleticism? 
I can't believe a deep, a six foot five, two hundred forty pound kid didn't get faked out there. He just kept his base. He kept zoning in, and we're gonna get a look here. He beats clean, comes off the edge, too much speed, gets rid of him right, right here. He didn't buy the fake, and what a play! You talk about flipping the field. That's a twenty yard loss. Now there's a good chance Adams is gonna get the ball on the plus side of the fifty again, and this game has turned. And that's 79. Sometimes we overhype guys. They never live up to the billing. We did not overhype 79. We had five sacks last week. Another one this week. And Williams' punt takes a favorable bounce. But Rochester Adams fields the ball. Wow. That was uh, yes. living on the edge. That, you- Christian Schomer, you're a gambling man, my friend. Adams has got the ball back with a chance to take the lead. West Bloomfield has been backed into a corner. What is the difference between this West Bloomfield team that we're going to see here tonight and the West Bloomfield team we saw on game one? I think the preparation is different, uh, how we prepare for this team. Uh, it's totally different how we prepare the first game. So we're going to see a difference in terms of knowing what they're supposed to do. Uh, secondly, I think these guys were a young team. We first-year starters. We had to replace nine guys on defense. So they got, what, nine, 11 games under their belt, and they gained a lot of experience. So they've been coached up. Hopefully they will be able to execute the plays and not make the type of mistakes we made again. Since losing to Adams in week one, Coach Grice and his team have been waiting to play them a- again and to redeem themselves so much that he is calling this game the big payback. On Monday, when the team went in to watch film of game one, Coach played James Brown's famous song, The Payback, because, because he wanted his team to remember what it felt like to lose that first game. He wants his guys to come into this game focused, play physical, and just go out there and do their job. Adams reaching into the bag of tricks, and it works. A pass to Joey Shallow for the first down. Nick Patera, the backup quarterback, threw that pass. And look, Rob, West Bloomfield had payback early in this game, but now Adams is paying them back. They are rolling in the second half. Well, this is good. They run it off the speed option. They pitch back to Nick Patera, who is the backup quarterback, as you said. And nice job delivering a good throw to Joey Shallow. Nick Patera has a pretty good bloodline. His grandfather... Herb Patera was a coach in the NFL for many years, actually coached in Detroit for the Lions. I, so, uh, I think he's by it pretty honestly, and it's something that um, I thought we'd see a little bit more of him in situations like that. Back to the ground, back to Christian Schomer. Heading to the edge, gaining a few on first down for Adams. Rob, what have you seen in this second half that has led to the Adams resurgence in the second half? Well, I think part of it was the ability to get a stop on the initial drive by West Bloomfield, and then you were a beneficiary of the poor punt, but then you took advantage of it offensively. A little bit more diversity. You're not seeing pounded inside as much. I don't want to say wasting places. No plays are ever wasted. As you said earlier, sometimes they're setting something else up. But they've seen to try to get to the edge a little bit more, stretch this defense of West Bloomfield, and try to find some creases. They've had some long drives tonight. This is shaping up to be another good drive. Griffin Henke gets him awfully close to another third down. Rob, we were talking about this throughout the first half and at the start of this second half. They had two drives in the first half that ended in the red zone. Finally now, Adams is starting to pay off these long, successful drives. Yeah, and they've probably had three times as many plays offensively as West Bloomfield has. I mean, you look at their place, you know, that's, you know, close to 40, 45 plays. I think West Bloomfield might have had 15, if that, in this game. It's like they've never had the ball. Give. Griffin Henke keeps his feet. First down, Adams. And as the third quarter starts to tick toward a close, the Highlanders are getting closer to grabbing the lead for the first time tonight. A lot of gives right up the gut to Griffin Henke tonight. The Adams Highlanders will take this ball game into the fourth quarter in front of a capacity crowd at Adams High School. They have packed together on a chilly mid-November night, and their hometown boys are battling back. West Bluefield led 13-0 at the half. This is a totally different game now. They got the ball after a stop to start the second half. 
Went right down, scored a touchdown. After the run by Joey Shallow, Parker Pico shuffled his way in. And they're driving again as we start the fourth. Football Fridays on Bally Sports are brought to you by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Family, it's not just the name of our company, but the way that we do business. And by your local Toyota dealer. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Evan Stockton, Rob Rubick, Brooke Fletcher back with you at Adams High. The Highlanders have got the ball down by a touchdown. They're trying to keep this drive alive. They uh, keep this dream alive, Rob Rubick. They won the state run. title back in 2003. Yeah, and look, they run a little midline there with Allen Guy following the, the fullback inside. And then some pressure outside, a big sack. Once again, Allen Guy, number 37. I've never seen quarterback with guns. Allen Guy had some big arms for a quarterback at high school. And they hoisted a trophy back at the Pontiac Silverdome. And Tony Petrino and I, Petrino, we got to talk yesterday a little bit. Evan, you're out here and we kind of referred back to that game because obviously they'd watched it over the years and Matt Shepard and I got the chance to call that and he just said what a special team that was but he, he puts his team right in the same category with what they've done this year Parker Pico in the gun joined by his brother on his left side he bounces off Tate's block and gains a few more on first down you know, something they do that's unique is when they run that quarterback power whatever just that pretty much go outside with it. Uh, they run to the short side of the field. Most teams don't run that to the wide side, but when you're playing a really fast team defensively, it kind of counters that because you don't have to chase because they're not going to go very far. They're going to be right there. You get your lineman on them a little bit. When you try to run to the wide side, it allows that speed sometimes to catch up and really string it out. Fifteen Hinky to his left. Parker Pico sends him back to the right on second down. Give Griffin Henke a good patient run. Wrangled backward before gaining the first down. Rob Harris makes the tackle. Still, though, Rob, a good gain on second down for Adams. Again, the whole playbook open on a third down short. Yeah, absolutely. And you're running. You're seeing more GT, as Coach Petrita referred to. I, we used to call it a counter trade where you bring the guard and tackle from one side. You pull them to the play side. And the back just kind of takes a counter step and follows them. And they're doing a good job getting pushed there. And you saw uh, Parker Pico trying to get Hanky where he wanted him by alignment before the play. Parker Pico keeps, lowers the shoulder, powers his way near the sticks, and he's awfully close. B.J. Rankin ran into Pico. That's close. We don't have a very good angle here. I think it's a first down now. Yep, first down for Adams. What a powerful run by Parker Pico. Yeah, it's another short side run to the boundary. A little fake inside. He's able to get outside. Good job by Orsini getting a the chip there. But how about that play coming up from the secondary that time? And lowering the boom, or the boom was B.J. Rankin. Really nice job. It looked like it was going to be more there. And Rankin shut it down quickly, but just enough to move the sticks. Playoff football in Michigan. we got to break out the heavy coats. Back into the end zone goes Adams with a chance to take the lead. Pico gives. Griffin Henke runs down near the five. You know what's funny is you can tell the Rochester Adams fans here, they've seen that so many times, a little quick hitter. They thought it was going to be a touchdown. But a nice job of closing and getting a hand on him, and it's a quick hitter. And it, it just look at that. Really trying to get a number. I think it's a number. Really nice job of sinking back inside by one of the linebackers and getting Henke by, by the legs. Because now that's going to be a touchdown. You can see that the holes are getting to be a little bit better for Adams in the second half. And that's just how many plays that defense has been out there. Just the pounding they're getting. They were down 13 nothing at the break. Pico keeps his legs moving. He does not have the touchdown. He does have the first down. And the Adams Highlanders are inches away from tying this thing up. And we're going to look here. This is that little counter step he takes. It's midline. He fakes it, and then he just bounces off to the left. And really good job coming up. And that, guess who? Dylan Tatum came up from the safety position and stoned Pico. It looks like he's going to be able to muscle his way in, but now they're going to have first and goal on the two. 
the junior quarterback, Parker Pico, 6'2", 185. He's been battling through ankle, knee injuries this year. Baseball player, a star baseball player going to Alabama. He's on the football field tonight, and he's got a chance to give his team a tie ball game. Give Griffin Henke touchdown. Well, that drive shows you what an offense is starting to feel a little bit confident, getting used to the blocking scheme, getting used to the personnel they're playing against can do in this type of offense because they just Pac-Man that clock, Pac-Man that ball right down the field. Colin Timko still has not missed an extra point this season. He's 51 for 51. These Adams Highlanders have the heart of a champion. 11-0 this year, down 13-0 at the half. They're not down anymore. We've got an action-packed Saturday night for you on Valley Sports. Tomorrow night, the Pistons are going to Toronto to take on the Raptors. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. on Valley Sports Detroit. And the Red Wings hosting the Canadians at Little Caesars Arena. Coverage starts at 6.30 on Valley Sports Detroit. Plus, how can you not love a good original six matchup on a Saturday night? And how can you not love watching the Wings and the Pistons and all the young talent that are on those yes. teams? We love watching this football game. You talk about a heavyweight back-and-forth swing, back-and-forth game, Rob Rubick. It was 13-0 West Bloomfield at the half. Now Rochester hey. Adams has got the lead. The Lakers have taken a couple of haymakers from the Highlanders. Let's see if they can come back, kind of catch their breath a little bit. A squib kick dangerously bounds in the middle of the field. West Bloomfield does fall on that ball. That's a good job right in the middle of the field by Davis Swain. Check it, that's DeAndre Hill who picked up the ball for West Bloomfield. Good starting field position for Rakez Nance and a West Bloomfield offense, Rob, that for the first time today has the ball trailing. Alex DeGreek had a monster sack on Nance on third down on the last drive. Both touchdowns tonight for West Bloomfield have come on the ground. The sophomore quarterback, Rick Nance, may be asked to throw to keep his team's state title defense alive. Not to hurry here, get guys set. On the biggest drive of West Bloomfield season, they start with the run, and Dylan Tatum barely gained an inch. My goodness, that defensive line for Adams is eating right now. That's just a really good job inside. Mohamed Mura, or Murray rather, does a good job. You're going to see coming right in there, there's Orsini filling from his linebacker position. He's the first one there, and look at Murray coming off fighting as well. That's just a lot of yellow jerseys at the point of attack. Stymieing Dylan Tatum. If you can do that, if you can get him before you can get going, before you can bounce it, before you can get into space, you got a lot better opportunity to stop this young man. Nance rolls, throws back to the other side of the field. The pass is incomplete, and there are flags on the field. Well, Rick Nance tried to do his best Kyler Murray imitation there. And does a pretty good job. He, he buys some time. He's able to get the ball down the field. And, the problem with this play, if you're uh, Adams, you got to do better. You don't. You never look back. And in high school, the officials see you never look back. You run into the receiver, and nine times out of ten, you're going to get the penalty against you. We're going to have offsetting penalties though, because they got West Woodfield gets a holding call. You get a pass interference call, I think, uh, against. Was that number four? Who was that? Was that, uh, that looked like Decreasy, number Decreasy, four out yeah. there on that play, yes. That's what I thought. That was Marco Decreasy taking the back out of the back to us. Good job at Marco recognizing, trying to leak the back out on the weak side. Just couldn't hold himself up and ran into the back and gets a penalty. So really no harm, no fall on that play. We'll do it again. Second and ten. Nance drops back. Pressure comes again. He throws incomplete. Wayne Herring in the vicinity. Nance's pass intended for Herring. Incomplete. Parker taking 
Right now, Adams is giving West Bloomfield a little taste of their own medicine. They are bringing the house. They're bringing pressure. They're manning up behind it. They're showing, okay, we're going to go man with our secondary, and we're going to bring bodies. One, two, three, four, five, six. You see six yellow jerseys coming in, some late pressure, and Rick Nance, he just has to throw it out of bounds and live to fight another day. Now a third down and ten. Boy, you don't want to give this ball up right now if you're West Bloomfield because this offense of Adams is starting to find its groove a little bit. You may not get it back. Whistle before the play, and Adams calls the first timeout of the second half. Tony Petrito's boys have come out of the locker room, scored the final 14 points we've seen in this game. Will it be the final 14? We're going to have to wait and see about that. But, Rob, how can you not be impressed with the way that the Highlanders have come out of the locker room? Yeah, they're down at home. Yeah, they're down by two scores. Yeah, it's cold. Yeah, Dylan Tatum is really good. <laughs> These boys have never blinked. Oh, let's look at that man right there with the tie looking dapper tonight, Tony Petrito. That's what his job is, and that's why he's good at his job. He was able to go in their halftime, rally the troops, so to speak, get them to believe in what they've done. And the fact that you're 11 and 0, it's easier to believe that, okay, we can be successful. This isn't the end of the world. We've been close in the first half. We had some drives. We just were kind of beating ourselves a little bit. Well, in the second half, they've executed much better. But what I find interesting is how many guys they have going both ways. You look at Adams, they start five, six guys both ways. They don't show any sign of fatigue at all. And that's just a tribute to him. And like he said, it's because in the summer. It starts in the summer with the conditioning, and it carries on. And they don't know any different. They've been playing both ways for 11 games. You'll work out in the summer for plays like this. Rick Nance on third down and long, hoping to make magic. He won't. That ball is loose. That ball's a live ball. Are they ruling him down or are they ruling a touchdown? They've ruled him down. They've ruled him down. Tate Pico looks to the gray early winter sky in disbelief. Well, this, of the is story. Just, this is just pressure. pressure coming home, yeah. Yeah, but I think Nance's bottom side is going to be down. Let's see. Ooh, I don't know. And, and, and you know, in hindsight, but that's a tough call. That's a really. I have, you know, I don't have a hard time with that. That is a really tough call. His, the ball is kind of turned away from the white hat who's sitting right there. Because he gets spun, he doesn't really see if the ball is in his hands that well. And so you can see the ball might come out just a tad early. But nonetheless, what a great job bringing pressure, getting the sack, forcing a punt again. And they, this has been an adventure for West Bloomfield. Williams sends a pretty darn good punt away. It's a bit of an Adams bounce, rolling sideways and dying at the 41-yard line. This Adams Highlanders offense, Rob, is built for moments like this. You've got the ball with the lead, inching toward the final few minutes of the game. This is the type of drive that defines your season. It is, and as you said, they're built for it. And now they really, with the game situation the way it is, they have much better opportunity to implement to use that running game. They've been successful, successful in the second half. They've moved the ball pretty well, so let's see what they're going to do, and let's see what West Bloomfield does, it, Evan. This is an opportunity. Maybe they're going to try to bring pressure. Maybe they're going to try to run some guys through. Get that TFL. Get Adams behind the chains. The Adams Highlanders have scored touchdowns on their last two drives. Their perfect season is alive. Pico running left, got away from a couple, got back to the line of scrimmage and gained maybe a yard. Michael Williams on the backside was coming for Pico. And now you wonder, Rob, you know West Bloomfield is selling out on the run. They're going to send guys all over the place. At some point, Tony Petrito is going to have to call some sort of throw to keep him off balance. Yeah, he may have to do that because, as I said, coming this drive, and as you just reiterated, is they're going to start taking chances. They're going to start running bodies through, trying to get that tackle for loss, trying to get that negative play, because this is a type of team that's not comfortable in third down and medium or third down and long. We've seen a, a trick play with the halfback pass by Patera early on, but besides that, they've really struggled. And we had one nice play where, in the first half, where um, 
Parker Pico was able to step up in the pocket and deliver that crossover. Besides that, not much success in the passing game. So the key to this offense is staying ahead of the sticks. And how do you stop them? Run, get some run through by your linebackers. Give Griffin Henke, who just scored the last touchdown for Adams. He gains a yard or two and sets up a third down that means everything to both of these teams. Yeah, right now you have to give the advantage to West Bloomfield because they got him a third down and seven. This is not West or, uh, Adams' comfort zone. We've seen that. And we saw one big catch early on. Was, was it Cyborg got it? And now we're, we're going to see what happens here. I, I think he almost in a, in a must-throw situation. Parker Pico has not been asked to throw a lot tonight. He may have to here. They keep it on the ground, and Williams was ready. A monster hit in the middle on Griffin Henke. And Adams forced to punt. Well, the two men in the middle there, Williams and uh, Brandon Davis Swain, have really done a nice job. And that time they tag team Henke. It looked like he kind of hit it quick. Might be something there. Before you know it, he was on his backside as an 11 and three converged for a nice play. Eight Pico to punt it away. West Bloomfield with a chance here. Adrian Epps back deep. Milking the clock. Great punt from Pico. He swings his right leg through it beautifully. The special teams play of the season. Well, we talk about playing offense. We talk about playing defense. You know, we had Parker Pico's brother. Well, Tate says, you know what? I, I can do a lot here, too. I can punt. So I, I'm, doing, I'm a two-way guy as well. And he catches it nice. It gets over the top. Not much respect on that back end by Adrian Epps, number 23. And all he can do is stand there in horror and watch that thing die in the one. Well, uh, you know, the, the good news for Adams is if you haven't pent up. The bad news for Adams is they got some guys now. They got some guys that can take it 99, that can make you miss, can make a big play. So you have to play discipline, and Tony Petrito knows that. His team's got to come out and play sound defense. Still 447, plenty of time. Because if I last time I checked, I think Dylan Tatum could probably do this distance in about 10 seconds. He is uh, hoping to have a chance to prove you're right, Rob. All by his lonesome in the end zone. Tatum gets out of the end zone, which is the most important thing in a situation like this. All West Bloomfield needs is a field goal. They've got all three timeouts. The longest field goal this year is 32 yards. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Tatum in the end zone again. Dylan runs into Griffin Henke. He drags him near the 10. Officially spotted at the 9. Third down for West Bloomfield. What do you call well, it, Well, I don't know, but here's something that shows you got a sophomore quarterback right now who's not in the game. You have your senior heading to Michigan State playing quarterback. I'm not sure if Dylan Tatum can throw or if he has thrown out of this formation, out of the Wildcat. But you got everything bunched up. If, I, if I'm defensively, I'm telling my safeties, you'd be ready for him to try to bounce something outside. Tatum up the middle. Depends on the spot. The D line for Adams has been eating West Bloomfield's lunch in the second half, and they stopped Dylan Tatum short. It's fourth yeah, down. But you're going for it. I mean, I know you're on your own 10-11 yard line. You cannot punt the ball. You can't afford that in this situation. Oh, they gave him the first down. They gave Dylan Tatum the first down, and Tyrese Grice can exhale. Well, they got a little bit of breathing room. They bring in the sophomore quarterback, comes back in the game, Rick Nance. Try to help him out. That brings the passing game back, and they just wanted to get enough breathing room, so you got to be careful. We tell your secondary, no double moves here. Gretsch run, near side of the field. Adams makes sure it doesn't bust a big play. They give it to D'Angelo Thomas and gain just a couple on first down. And that clock's going quickly here now. 
Yes, I'm saying high school football. This is not the NFL. 242 in the NFL is about three possessions for each team. <laughs> in high school, it goes fast. No two-minute warning. I don't know how many timeouts is West Bloomfield. The clock really doesn't tell. They timeouts. got all three timeouts, all three. Rob, but I am shocked with the way they're operating their offense here. They're operating like it's their first drive of the game. Maybe their last. Nance, popcorn pass. Morgan wants to throw. He throws incomplete. Hoping for the quarterback, Nance. What a time to call that play. Well, and Marco DeCreasy happens to realize they're doing the throwback. He does a good job in the backside. They went after him early on on another one where they ran ran the throwback, and he was there. If he happens to look here, you're going to see they're going to try to, with Samaj Morgan doing the throwback, if DeCreasy would look, he would could have stopped and intercepted because you could see he was going to be underthrown badly. Now, third down and nine, Evan. Huge play for the Lakers. Watch it. Watch possibly a draw. Nance throwing on the third down of the season. Morgan goes up, makes an outstanding catch, but he's short of the first down. That clock continues to tick away. West Bloomfield forced to call their first time out of the second half. Samaj Morgan makes an incredible catch, but we will see the play of the season for the Lakers and the Highlanders when you come on back. Don't miss this finish. There are three phases to a football game. Adams just proved it. The Highlanders on their last drive punted and downed West Bloomfield near the two-yard line. So, Rob, this pivotal drive for West Bloomfield, we're about to see a fourth down that decides their season. It had to start inside the five, and it just totally yeah. changed the strategy. A couple of things I want to talk about. First of all is the punting game. You talk about the third phase. Totally won by Adams today. West Bloomfield struggled punting the ball. They've given up a lot of yards in the kicking game. The other thing I want to talk about is I think that's a great timeout. Because this could be, you're going to lose another 20 seconds. So now fourth down and two, the game pretty much hinges on this play. If you get stopped if you're West Bloomfield, you might get the ball back with teens in the seconds at best, maybe 15 seconds. Dylan Tatum with the game on the line. The Adams D line got the surge, pushed him back, and stopped him short. Well, this is the problem when you do run the Wildcat. Everyone knows Dylan Tatum's running the football. So now what you're doing is you're just going to pinch up front. You're going to load the box. You put seven, eight in the box. You're going to pinch your defense alignment into the gaps, create a pile, let your linebackers come in and fill. And we're going to see this right here. Great job coming off a block. Is that Murray inside again? But there was nowhere to go. The guys in yellow just really won the war up front. You see Orsini trying to fill from the middle. There's just nowhere to go. You know, Dylan Tatum's looking for a gap. He's looking for a crease. There's nothing there. The Adams Highlanders beat West Bloomfield in the first game of the year. This one coming right down the wire. West Bloomfield still has two timeouts, but they are 154 away from knocking off the defending state champs again. On your coach, Tony Petrito, you're telling your guys right now, two hands of the ball, nothing too fancy. Go, gives, very good gain for Adams. So pivotal in a spot like this. Christian Schomer with a gain of nearly eight. And that's a play you haven't seen much. That was the little motion. They've, they've motioned Schomer a lot to have him lead in, in the Veer option game, but that time they gave it to him. He did a nice job of getting to the edge and cutting it up. It all started early for West Bloomfield. Dylan Tatum. One broken tackle, two broken tackle, three broken tackle, one great cut, goodbye. Dylan Tatum scores the first touchdown of the ball game. Lakers rolling early. On we go to the second quarter. Same song, different verse. Dylan Tatum, little stutter step, gas pedal gone. Two touchdowns early for Dylan Tatum, and West Bloomfield was rolling early. This was the only thing that happened. Wow, this is a key for the play. You, you, first this is the extra point, and that's ultimately probably going to be the difference in this game is that one point conversion. Off the timeout, Pico decides to sneak awfully close to a first down that decides the game. He is short, and West Bloomfield stops the clock. 
for the final oh, time he's... tonight. So you just saw how West Bloomfield scored twice in the first half. Right. Rob, Adams has scored twice in the second half, doing what they do best. And we're just seeing the culmination of some nice drives, getting to the end zone, controlling the ball up and down the field, and then finishing with the power game inside. And that's just a nice job by that offensive line, too, in the second half. They've really exerted themselves. I'm, not, I'm never going to say impose your will because I cannot stand that saying. What I do say is that they've kept playing, and they're starting to win up front. They're not imposing any will. They're just saying, all right, we're going to block you, block you, block you. I'm losing in the first quarter. Second quarter's getting closer. But by the fourth quarter, I'm starting to win. Whether it's conditioning, whether you get, you know, on the other side, what happens. But this offense has looked different in the second half than it did in the first half. You have to agree with that. I mean, they've been much more efficient in the run game. The Adams offense has their season on the line right here. Oh, good discipline by the Lakers. I jump, I jump. Pico under center, trying to sneak forward. They're pushing him forward. I don't know if he got it. That clock's going to continue to go. This is a no-brainer, though. You you run. Well, I think you, if you're Tony Petrito, you run it all the way down to the official says there's one second. You tell him, I'm going to take a time over one second. You bring your team over. You talk to him. You get whatever play you want, and you run it. And the only life that West Bloomfield is going to have is they have to get a stop. So you have to put 11 people in the box. Maybe you run that jet. Maybe you try to run that jet motion. We saw it on the first play in this drive where uh, Schomer was able to get seven yards because they're going to be pinching and squeezing inside. Maybe you can try to hit him on the edge. Exactly what Coach Petrito's doing. He's standing right next to the official. Calls the timeout. Clock frozen with 50 seconds to go. Uh, clock man. Clock man. <laughs> Game clock in the stadium kept going. Didn't it run off about 10 extra seconds here? Is that wrong? That's how I heard the official. And then, uh oh, we'll have to reset it, look at it. And... Rob, they'll get that fixed. But look, the point yeah. remains, as you were just saying, if I'm Adams, it's a no brainer for many reasons. I trust my offense to get a yard to keep my season going, to knock off the defending champs. In worst case scenario, you set up West Bloomfield with 80 plus yards to go right, and to no score timeouts. to win the game, and they don't have any timeouts. Yeah, I, I, I think, though, but I, I really don't know how much room you're going to make when you get a bunch of 300 pounders in side for West Bloomfield. I, I really think I would like to see him try something to the edge. And maybe you go to the short side of the field. Surprise him and not run to the wide side. They've, they've done the boundary quite a few times in the second half. Pico gives and Adams didn't get it. Tried to sneak a run to DeCreasy. The Lakers stop him short, and West Bloomfield is alive. I think they tried exactly what I said they were going to do. They tried the jet to, uh, with DeCreasy to the boundary, to the short side of the field. The problem is penetration inside. He couldn't even get outside the tackle. As he's trying to go wide, you see the penetration coming up, and a great job by Corey Garrison. I personally am stunned. They didn't put Pico under center and try to sneak him forward for a first down. That's one of those situations as a coach. Sometimes you can overthink it a little bit. But the point we just made still remains. West Bloomfield is pinned back near their 10 with no timeouts. And just under 50 seconds to work. Adams will call a timeout. The last they have remaining. You know, Rob, this is such an interesting scenario to think about for West Bloomfield because on their last drive, which also started deep in Adams' territory, they rarely risked a throw. You're asking your sophomore quarterback, Rick Nance, to have to throw in this scenario to keep your season alive. But what you have to do is you tell Rick Nance, listen, we're going to shotgun. you got to set 1,001 and you got to throw. You can't scramble. You can't try to do that. We have to throw a fade. We have to throw a skinny down the middle. We have to take a shot. We know there's going to be coverage. You're not going to throw to a guy that's going to be wide open. People are going to be there. But you have to take a shot because we don't need 20 yards. We don't need 30 yards. We need 60 yards even for a field goal opportunity probably. So you, you can't hang on the ball. You can't take a sack. A sack at this level will pretty much half the clock off the rest of the game. Now, if you're on the other hand, let's look at Adams. Are you going to try to bring pressure and cover with fewer people on the backside? 
You mean right now Tony Petrino's telling his guys, listen, you know double move. Get out, I don't care. You let him catch it, we'll come up and tackle. Rick Nance throws. Samaj Morgan makes the catch. Smartly gets out of bounds. And Westhead Bluefield has a first down with their season on the line. I would think they have a legitimate chance at a field goal to win this game. What do you think, 20? I know the long of the year is a 32-yarder. So if you get to the 20, it might be a 37. I'm giving a little bit of extra pop. I mean, look, it's a 32-yarder, their longest of the season. Reasonably, you probably have to get to the opponent's 25 to think about it, to think about it. Ants throws, Tatum catches and gets out of bounds. West Bloomfield forced to work the sidelines, Rob, because they're out of timeouts. Right. But you, uh, if you're Adams, I guess if you're giving them five yards of play, you, are you okay with that? Yes. I mean, they're, they're already out to the, what, the 28? I mean, they're still... Uh, 10, 20, 30, you're still 50 yards away. Well, look, if you're going in five-yard chunks and you take off four or five seconds on every single play, I'm good with that if I'm Adams. The sophomore quarterback, Rick Nance. Who they try to bring? They're still just going to rush three. Let's keep it in. Big number 79, the Greek. Nance has time, loads, goes deep for DeAndre Hill. It's incomplete. That is exactly what Adams did not want. West Bloomfield got somebody behind the defense. Yeah, and, but that's what West Bloomfield needed to do. You need to take a shot. You need to stretch the field and make them play the ball in space, in the air, see how they react. Well, that actually hit him in the hands. I mean, that's that's a great opportunity for DeAndre Hill to make the catch. That's the second one today that's gone. But that's tough. I mean, you got arms swinging, bodies flailing, and I think that's a great no call. I don't think there was any pass interference. Obviously, the Lakers side is kind of trying to hope to get a call there, but that's a good no call. Now it's third down and five. They got to get enough at least move the sticks here quick. Nance evacuating the pocket. Throws. It's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Hill. Well, Hill's been struggling this guy. That's two two plays. And if he can make either one, it's going to give him a much better opportunity to get a get position to make a field goal attempt. Now we're 25 seconds. It's fourth down and five. And that's Dylan Tatum that's down on the field. Oh, my goodness. Now, is he cramping? Or let's just hope. I, I hope he's cramping. This is not what you want to see. It's more important, you know, obviously you think, oh, they're not going to have him for fourth down, but more important is this young man has such a bright future. But the way they're massaging it, and I'm not a doctor, but I've definitely had cramps as a player. Looks like they're trying to rub a cramp out of his calf. Dylan and, you know, Tatum. he plays both ways. He's, yeah. played, he's played every play in this game, basically. He's run wildcat. He's run tailback. He's run safety. He's done a lot. Um, they've, got, they've got the mileage out of him. There's a nice look at uh, the freak. Better known, his real name, De Greek, but he is unbelievable high school football player. Heading to Harvard, the Eli are getting a good one. And they are. You need to trademark that. Sell it to his family, make a few bucks. Freak. Yeah. Oh man, he can play. He is. Look at he's kind of meaty too. He's not. He's not skinny. He's got some guns on him there for a high school kid. He's. I can see him about 260 and just being just causing havoc in the Ivy League. And a guy who's been causing havoc all year for West Bloomfield, down in the field, Dylan Tatum, who is going to Michigan State next year, a prized recruit for Mel Tucker and his coaching staff. A guy who's gone both ways all season long, Rob, as you just alluded to. He scored both touchdowns for West Bloomfield tonight. And you just don't want to see this potentially at the end of his senior season, something that could hinder and hamper the start to his college career. Yeah, I, I think he's going to be okay. I mean, like I said, I'm not a doc, but I'm just looking at him. Now he's definitely stretching it. And... But he, think... he'll be out for this fourth down play, even if he gets rid of the cramp, which he might be able to do here in a little bit. I know people say, oh, he's hurt now. He can't play the rest of the game. But sometimes you can work a cramp out pretty quick, and you can try to play again. The bad part is if you don't get any fluids and really change your, you know, what's going inside you, it's going to happen again. Yeah. Tatum off the field. Season on the line for the defending state champs. Nance, fourth down, rolling right. He's got grass in front of him. 
Nance spins, gets the first down, but that's not the end of the world for Adams. The clock stops briefly with 16 seconds to go. They'll probably get under center, and I would think they might spike the ball as they run the clock. Tick, 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 tick. Oh, my oh, goodness. He, died, he, died, he is on his knee. The clock should continue to run. Oh, my goodness. The sophomore quarterback uh, made a mistake that's going to end the game. He took a knee instead of spiking the ball. Did West Bloomfield get it off in time? There's a second or two left. Nance makes oh, a mistake. He tough. takes a knee yep, instead of tough. spiking it. You feel terrible for a young guy like that. But now West Bloomfield is going to have to have the miracle of all miracles to keep their defense of a state title alive. Yeah, that's just that's just a mistake that you're going to see. He's wanted to kill the clock, but he's thinking, I'll just down the ball. He goes to knee. The play is now dead, and the clock continues to run. And uh, I'm, you know, it, they did stop the clock for a second. But they're going to st- we'll wait now because it's an incomplete pass. That's going to be one of those ones they might catch and start laddling around. What does West Bloomfield have in their bag of tricks? Mance throws. Morgan makes the catch, but this baby's over. For the second time this season, the Adams Highlanders have knocked off the state champs. Wonderful high school football game, and you know what a job we have. We get to come out to these different communities on a Friday night, representing Valley Sports, and watching this the high school football. Some great players, well coached, and we're gonna head to send it down to Brooke. She's got Alex the Greek. Yeah, I'm here with the man of the hour. He's trying to catch his breath here. <laughs> Alex, you took down West Bloomfield two times in one season. Tell me, how does it feel? This seems special. We all love each other. We have great chemistry. Hang out every weekend. We've been lifting all offseason together. We're just, they have mad talent. They're a very good team. But we're just a better team overall. We just work better together. I mean, you guys came out in the second half just like a completely different team. What changed? In the locker room, um, our coaches did a good job making sure our heads were up, making good halftime adjustments. We kept the energy up, and we knew we were good enough to go and win this game. You mentioned the hard work you guys put forth in the offseason. Your coach described this team as resilient. How would you describe the resilience you guys showed here tonight? Uh, I mean, we were down 13 at the half against like a top five team in the state and coming back to win 14-13. It's pretty resilient, so I got to that too. <laughs> yeah. You guys are just one win away from making it to Ford Field. Yeah. Just let that sink in for a second. Yeah. What would it mean to you to get to Ford Field, Alex? I mean, it would mean everything, but we have to focus on the next game. We can't focus about the state game, obviously, because we're not going to get there unless we win this next game. And let's just talk about your game real quick. I mean, you were on fire here tonight. What sparked that energy? I just want to play for my guys. I wasn't done playing with them. I played with most of them since I was – 10 years old. I don't want this to be my last game with them. All right. Well, luckily you got your key. You're going to continue this. So congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. Catch your breath. We appreciate it. Evan, back to you. Brooke, that's what we live for as high school football fans in Michigan. Look at that. Uh, it doesn't get much better than this. That's their first regional championship right. since uh, 2007, Rob. Hey, you know what, though? I'm looking down to the right here, the team in the white jerseys. That's a young football team that came a long ways over the course of this season. You're going to hear from them next year. Even though they're losing Dylan Tatum, they, I saw a lot of good players they have in that team that are going to make a lot of noise. Our Menards big money moment tonight. The man we just heard from, Alex DeGreek, the defensive play of the game. Rick Nance couldn't escape. The man bound for Harvard. I tell you what, he lived up to everything we talked about. Played a tremendous game on defense, also on offense. In the second half, he was big key to that offensive running game, really kind of finding its its feet during the second half. And look at him celebrate there. Hopefully he doesn't twist an ankle. So 
You know, Evan, I'm just looking back here, and, and what a really unbelievable game. If you'd have told me they would end up 14 to 13, I wouldn't have believed it at halftime. It was 13 nothing. I really thought West Bloomfield was starting to maybe have an opportunity to put more points on the board, but Adams really turned the screws in the second half. They were better on both sides of the ball. The Adams Highlanders, who came into this game oddly as underdogs against mm-hmm. the West Bloomfield team that they beat early in the year. What more can you say about a program that was down by two scores at halftime, never blinked, came right back, and won the game in the second half? Just such an impressive yeah. victory for this program. And, and two well-coached teams, Coach Grice for West Bloomfield, Co- Coach Petrito for Adams, and it was clean played, you know, a few, quite a few holding penalties, but no dirty penalties, no personal fouls, and that's what I liked and very enjoyable game. These Adams Highlanders are one win away after winning the regional title from making it to Ford Field in a couple of weekends. One other game went on tonight and Sterling Heights Stevenson beats Macomb Dakota by a touchdown. Two more heavyweight battles tomorrow, Rob. You got Graham Blake and Rockford, the winner of that. We'll play Adams next week. And then Fortson, Belleville is going to be a treat for all of us to watch tomorrow. Yeah, don't underestimate Fortson, the tractor we had in the first game of the year at Wayne State, and I was very impressed. The Adams Highlanders beat the defending state champs for the second time this season. This win means the champs are no longer the champs. West Bloomfield falls to Adams in one heck of a ball game. For Rob Rubick, Brooke Fletcher, producer Brian Henry, and director Max Hinson, Evan Stockton saying so long from Rochester and Adams High. Next week, Saturday afternoon, the semi's coming. Thanks for joining us on Valley Sports.